The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. There's excitement in the air at the 2024 FIDE candidates in Toronto, Canada. It may be the weekend for most, but these elite GMs are hard at work, hoping to earn the right to take on the world champion. Former challenger Jan Nepomneshi faced off against fellow leader Gukesh Domaraju, but after a quick bout, settled for a draw to remain tied at the top. Number one seed Fabiano Caruana had to fight off a tenacious Alareza Ferruja, but was able to get the draw to remain in a three-way tie for Vern. After only one decisive result, the standings are still tight, but front runners are forming. Will they stumble or begin to pull away? Day four of thrilling chess, coming up next. here at the playing hall of the FIDE candidates tournament. The three rounds are already in the books and we have already the fourth round running. Let's go to the studio and follow the action. There's a three-way tie at the top of the open section and two of the leaders are facing each other today. Round four starts right now. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, International Master Nazi Paikidze, and I'm here with my co-host, Grandmaster Yasser Sarawan and Evgeny Miroshenko. <laughs> welcome, Nazi. Welcome, hey. Miro. It's good to be back. It's good to be back. In fact, we have witnessed three very, very quickly played rounds. In fact, the games haven't gotten too much longer than the first time control, and we've been out of here fast. Will that be the case today? Well, it is the day before the free day, and I do expect some really hard-fought games. Nasi, do the honors. Tell us about the standings. Uh, let's begin with the open section. Let's take a look. After three rounds, we have three co-leaders, Fabiano Caruana, Yanni Pomnishi, and Gukesh. With one and a half points sharing fourth place, Prague and Vidit. And for the ladies? And in the ladies section, we have a sole leader, Tan Zhonggi with two and a half points. Closely following, Alexandra Garyachkina with two points. And sharing third, Hampi Kuneru, Katerina Lachno, and Vajeli. And tell us about the pairing for this round four. Very exciting matchups today. We have Hikaru Nakamura playing Prague. Jan Nipomnishi against Vidit. That's a big one. Fabiano Caruana facing Gukesh. That's bigger. <laughs> and a bus of playing Firuja. And in the ladies, the pairings for them. And in the ladies section, we have Lachno playing the tournament leader Tan Zhangyi, Salimova playing Hampi Konero, Garyachkina against Vaishali, and Anna Muzichuk facing Lei Tingji. And remind everybody about our schedule. The players will play a total of 14 rounds. Today, they start round four, and tomorrow, they have a rest day. In case of a tie, we might see tie breaks on April 22nd. Thank you, Nasi. And Miro, we do have some leaders. How did they get, how, how did they get here? Uh, well, with only three rounds under our belt, <laughs> right, you do not expect too much of a variety there. So let's start with Gukesh and find out that he made a draw in round one against his compatriot Vidit. Then he played with Prague and he won this game and eventually round three draw against Jan Nepomnishi. Same goes for Fabi. He made a draw in round... Uh, no, well, start with Jan, pardon me. So beats Nija Dabasov and as we agreed, it was a very important win, right? Now, he didn't, I can't read Yasser, so, so something Ali is Reza. wrong with me today. <laughs> yeah, so he drew against Abbasov. As I said, it's a symmetrical result. So draw with Abbasov, wins against Ali Reza. And right. it is a very important, of course, right? Very important win. It was Huge. a sharp tactical game. Draw against Gukesh in round three. And then Fabi, and Fabi was the one to beat Abbasov in round two, but right. he started with a draw against Hikaru Nakamura, then won against Abbasov, drew Ferruja, and yeah, well, jumping a bit of front, Fabi is playing Gukesh, so two leaders facing each other. 
In the ladies section, our only leader, Dan John Gi, started with two back-to-back -back wins against Lie Tingye and Vaishali, and then with the black piece, it's quite comfortably held for a draw, Humpy Conero. Right, and on that note, let me jump to Toronto. Let's hear from Anastasia. Hello, Yasser, Nazi and Miro. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. Yesterday I had finally the chance to go to the plane venue and I could actually feel this really, really tense atmosphere in the plane hall. You cannot imagine how stressed are the players. There are no talks, there are no smiles, nothing. You know, they're so concentrated. They come to the board and they just focus on the pieces and they try to not to lose the concentration. Uh, you know, this event is absolutely different from all the others which we witnessed uh, earlier because everybody knows that uh, their fortune, their life depends on the way they play this tournament. It can change everything for them. So that's why you can feel this tension in the, in the venue. Yesterday was actually a very remarkable day for India fans and of course for Ramesh Babu family because both um, Pragnananda and Vaishali won their games. They were actually the only winners of the round three. Um, these siblings actually already beat some records because they're the only grandmasters, um, brother and sister who are playing in such a top uh, high level event here in Toronto. Uh, of course, it's not an easy walk for them. Definitely today, um, Pragnananda will be playing against Hikaru Nakamura and Vaishali will face um, Alexandra Goreshkina. So, of course, we will see what will happen today. Uh, of course, rooting for Fabiano and uh, Nakamura. Actually, from all the players, I think, because they have all this experience playing in the candidates tournament, it feels like they are the only ones who can at least smile after the games and try to be, you know, pleasant with media and, uh, you know, they give the interviews and everything. So, um, rooting for them. Let's, uh, let's check what's happening today. And please don't forget to follow our social media accounts the St. Louis Chess Club and uh, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to send your uh, answers for my puzzles and um, stay tuned for the round four. Thank you, Anastasia, and thank you for all the work that you and Bacon have done for the social media. A lot of behind the scenes stuff going on there. Um, before we just jump into the games, let's remind everybody that obviously they want to become challenger. That's mm -hmm. it, you know, number one. But there's a price fund as well. What are the players playing for? Quite handsome prize fund. In the open section, the first place prize is 48,000 euros, second place 36,000, third place 24,000, and in addition, each player will receive 3,500 euros for every half point scored. Time for that winning streak. And in the ladies. And in the ladies, the prize fund, the first place is 24,000 euros, second place 18, third place 12, and each player will receive additional 1,750 euros for every half point scored. And as we were coming on air, we noticed that there's a repetition that's being played by Hikaru's game. Uh, Miro, uh, bring us up to date. Uh, right, so that's a current position in Nakamura against Pragnananda. And last couple of moves were, well, we've been here on move 19, the queen on e1 happened to be not very useful, so Hikaru goes queen d1 while aiming to probably go knight h5. Right. And this was, yeah, Prague replies with rook a2, targeting the pawn, queen to b1, rook a8. And queen to d1 and rook to a2, hinting nice. at repeating the moves. So now if Hikaru goes queen b1, rook goes back to a8, it will be up to Hikaru, so it's still not threefold repetition, but it yeah. will be up to Hikaru if he goes queen d1 mm. and repeats uh, the position. So, right. And do we know if he's happy with the draw? I mean, pre-match, I would say no. no. Like having the white pieces, he's uh, on minus one, right? So he'd right. be looking. But yeah, but if you look at the position, it's not that it promises all that much. Uh, well, contrary to what you could have thought, it was the Italian. It wasn't. It <laughs> was uh, uh, one of the Berlin. one of the Spanish lines. Yeah, yeah, but well, the position is very similar. So pretty much, Black at some point went bishop to e6. It was exchange, and the pawn captured, uh, pawn captured on e6. And same happened. Uh, oh, exchange on e3 happened to dark square bishops. Right. And this structure, it's so solid for both. 
Right. It's very, very hard to come up with any sort of active plan. It's, it's a very usual scenario that you're getting the open A file, you're getting open F file, you swap all the pieces on those files, and yeah, draw would seem to be a fair result. Well, I tell you, for Prague, it's certainly been a change of fortune as he started uh, with the draw and then a loss. Mm -hmm. But yesterday's victory was sensational. Uh, he took a huge risk with F5 and it paid off and his fans love him. Take a look at, uh, he was mobbed <laughs> as he left the playing hall. So many fans waiting for him outside to get his signature, take <laughs> photos with exactly. him. Exactly. I was in Dusseldorf, Germany uh, last year uh, where I witnessed exactly the same thing. We would leave the playing hall and there would just be a group, and I mean seriously, 100, 200 people. And let's say we didn't get very far. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner was put on hold as he's got chess fans galore. And Thanks to his comeback yesterday, he's sitting at 50% and draw with black. He'd be, he'd be, he'll, he'll take that going into the rest day. And uh, Miro, what's happened in our another marquee matchup between Fabi and Gukesh? These are our two leaders. Absolutely, that would be the game we will concentrate the most on. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to start a few moves before Earlier. the yeah. actual position in the game. So, as you could guess that so this was the Gioco Piano Italian, yeah, and we are back to back to kind of normal openings, a lot, yeah. a lot of Gioco Pianos or the likes today. And in the position on the board, one of the factors, as, as you could see, like pawn structure is pretty symmetrical. One of the very important factors that White has gotten a knight on f5, which is not that easy to kick away. Right. right. With the pawn on h7, you could think of g7, g6. It would weaken your king, but at least get rid of this knight. Now you don't have this luxury, because whenever you go g6, the h6 pawn hangs with a check. And, uh, well, and Gukesh had to take, I don't think it's a, you know, it's an easy decision, but he had to go knight to e7, trying to exchange this knight, but sacrificing the pawn on e5. Offering a pawn. Uh, well, Fabi captured the pawn and, you know, uh, computer, in fact, says that, well, Don't. might have been that the knight on f5 is more important than the pawn. So one of the suggestions is just to support the knight with the other one. Mm -hmm. Claims that white has the advantage, as he has in the game as well. So instead, after knight e7, Fabi captures the pawn. Might seem like a blunder because knight takes and then the knight's attacked, but by the same token, you take with the pawn, open your rook, the knight's protected. c5 was played and bishop f4. That's what we have. It's very, very likely that, you know, this tension on the queen side might resolve into all the pawns getting mm -hmm. swapped. Right. right. And then. White would be still better, but the, the extra pawn he has is doubled. Marginal. So it's not clear if you can convert something like this. Right. So according to the machine, we have 0.38 advantage, which, well, translated into human terms, at less than half a pawn. Right. I don't know what half a pawn means, but <laughs> this is less than half a pawn. So White certainly has the initiative, has the advantage. Uh, like, if, if I don't look at what the computer has to say, I like White's position a lot. Well, some tempi, rook to d1 with a tempo, knight to c6, jump somewhere. So I'm optimistic for Fabi, but at the same time, like, knowing that computer is not saying White's winning, I assume Black has his resources and will be, it'll be a very serious fight. Uh, checking the time, Fabi is down to 50 minutes, Gukesh to a little bit less than 40. Mm. And we are at move 20 here. So potentially, it might be quite an unpleasant time trouble. Because, yes, one would say we are quite far in the game, but at the same time, that certainly is a critical position. And one tends to spend, like, moves 20 to 25. This is where chess players usually spend mm. enormous amount of time. Right. Right? That's why we have uh, two hours for 40 moves at first place, right? We know the opening, and then the critical position, which has to be navigated. Absolutely. Thank you, Miro. As we were coming mm -hmm. on the show, Nasi, we reached this position and you were advocating a move I really liked as well. And that move, again, Gukesh did play the move C7, C5, mm -hmm. and 
that looks okay. But the move you were advocating, which I liked a lot, was the move knight on f6 to d5. In a sense, white needs to develop his rook and his bishop, and he can do that by playing a takes b5, or by simply playing bishop f4 and, and rook d1, as we're about to see in the game. But the move knight mm -hmm. to d5 which again you are you are showing uh, you really takes away the f4 square and if for example we put the bishop on d2 and black nah. has a new resource queen h4 and right. new target on f2 and i started to feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and when i was when i went into my defensive mm -hmm. mode you were uh, aggressing <laughs> you were capturing and you were playing rook to d8 and, and at some point, black even has ideas like to just play queen c4, and the compensation is that black has very active pieces. Exactly, exactly. The pawn on f5 in this particular position does not make a, a very powerful mm -hmm. uh, impression. In fact, it just feels like it doesn't do much. Uh, so the move knight d5 uh, essentially uh, fulfills a, a number of really nice things. Uh, it opens up the queen, puts pressure in the center with the knight, stops the bishop from developing, and mm -hmm. perhaps queen h4. The other thing is there is this uh, rook, if you will, that needs protection. So whether you play bishop b4, pardon me, bishop b2 or bishop d2, the bishop's not so active. Conversely, in the game, after c5, I share Mero's viewpoint. You know, the knight on e5 is excellent. Suddenly the bishop is, you know, uh, active, rook d1, and the bishop is mm -hmm. uh, supporting everything. So. But I think like Miro said that we might see all the pawns get traded on the queen side. For example. It's going to happen line. because Gukesh just took on a4. Makes sense. Takes. Would you take back with the queen, rook, or not even bother taking it back yet? <laughs> uh, a, a good question because, it, seriously, I... Whenever I am in a, a middle game position where there are pawns on both flanks, I want to, to be the side with the bishop. Definitely. So there's queenside pawns and kingside pawns. I want to be the side with the bishop. So when you take my pawn on a4, I do think about the Swizhenzug, knight c6 first. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do want to take on a4. Yes, I probably want to take with the queen. But I'm thinking that if I could... Queen d7, let's queen say. Queen d7, okay, let's say... Let me take this guy down here, check. You can take with the queen, you can take with the rook. How would you like to do? Essentially, let me just show you what I'm aspiring mm -hmm. for, okay, if you don't mind that. I'm aspiring for an ending. And again, I'm not saying it's great or... Duh, 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 where when we get uh, pawns on both flanks, I've got the bishop. So, and the extra pawn still there. <laughs> and it exists. Uh, as Miro said, if it ever comes down to four versus three, you're not going to think your winning chances are so high. Uh, mm -hmm. But after AB5, as Fabi answered? Uh, he's, he's thinking. Pardon me, B5, uh, B5, 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 yes. A, B5, A4. <laughs> uh, and, and Miro, back over to you. You have uh, news for us from the Vidit. Uh, right, from Vidit and Nepo. So let's not forget Nepo is also one of oh, the leaders. Also one of right? our leaders, yes. Uh, yeah, so first things first, don't look there, look there. So Nepo Ooh, is one, on one hour and seven, minutes. and Vidit is down uh, to 18 minutes. Wow. Uh, so not necessarily, you know, a deadly time trouble because they are on move 26. But, but still, <laughs> something to, to think about. The clock is a and, pressure. Yeah, the position I have on the board, it's not the real position yet. It's move 20. It's just a little test for you, Yasa, and our views. Let's imagine you didn't see what were the opening moves. Right. What would be your guess? Berlin. 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 Berlin Precisely. Yeah. Right. And turns out it's, it's a very popular line where on move 12, all of a sudden, Jan played knight h2, which according to our database is a novelty. Whoa. Uh, well, the logical one, because uh, if you try, uh, well, I mean, you, you want to connect mm -hmm. your, your pawns, right? So right. you want to play f2 to f4. Clear. Regrettably, it's illegal pawn is not jumping <laughs> over the knight. So you have to move the knight, and I believe knight d4 
been played in many games, but then black reacts with h5 and this g4 pawn is somewhat hanging in the air. So knight h2 is logical. Logical. Anyway, we've gotten... Okay, this is move 26, much, much further on. Right. Uh, right, and uh, rook b3 with its last move. He's trying oh, to speed maybe... up on the clock. Right, so yeah. it was a mistake, turns mm. out. Well, what's interesting, what computer says, like he had to play c4 and use this rook over the fifth rank, target the e5 pawn. Also but logical. honestly, those positions, I've been on both ends, like I've played with black, well, Berlin with black, I played with white. It's very hard to navigate. And during the game, you think you're doing something clever, then you check with the machine and every second move wasn't the best, to put it mildly. Uh, rook b3 and Nepo takes the chance, goes g6, after which apparently white is much better. So g6, fg6, and the continuation is quite straightforward. So knight takes, and you know, in some cases, if you move the rook, let's say here, it's not impossible that white's gonna use the king to pick up the h5 pawn. Yeah, right. well, he goes, computer goes like rook f3, so on, just says white is much better. I have a I question about that rook that. on b3. Is it kind of stuck there? Does it have to go back to b5 e. at some point and still play c4? Yes, yeah, so that, that's a big question. So I assume he went rook b3, hoping to be on time with b5 and b4, and mm -hmm. then use the rook over the third rank. But like looking at computer variations, especially after g6, when the king side gets open, black Very seemingly bad. is not in time. Right. And then the rook is really getting stuck here. And I believe that's why that's why white's better. Right? How do they compare in their head to head matchup uh, these? Let's two find out. So Nepo against Swidit. Uh, I would say even Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm a little bit surprised to be honest. Yeah, but Nepo has two wins but also two losses against Swidit with six right. draws. And if you think about their careers and their overlapping, most of those matchups, Jan was clearly the favored player. Absolutely. So Vidit has actually performed well against Jan in their matchups. But I was going to say, uh, Knight takes G6. This is very promising, uh, not just because of uh, King H4, but. Uh, I'm thinking the rook on b3 is actually yeah. kind of stuck. rook on b3 is not doing much, and right. this is what yeah, this is what computer kind of highlights with rook f3. Right. Then later on gets ah oh, okay, let's go b5, let's go b5, b4, open the rook. Yeah. yeah. Knight takes in this case. Knight takes. Can I take a pawn? Knight e4 is you what you do. You, you want to target to the c5, <laughs> and also you have knight d2. Oh. So I'm guessing, yeah, that's more than a pawn for white already, oh, no. plus 1.5, and that means that in all of those lines, like, yeah, black has some active moves like knight f5 check, where white calmly goes to f2, but I assume at some point white just goes knight Rook d2 and wins, yeah, wins the exchange. That is. Which pretty huge. much wins, why uh, pretty much means that white is, well, dominant. So Vidit's in real trouble, and he's also has four times less time on the clock, even more. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. and with that, yeah. uh, uh, so this uh, is a big uh, advantage for him. Not much is happening in the Nijat versus Ali Reza uh, game, although now that I'm just counting <laughs> the pawns, uh, black seems to have snatched. Oh. The H pawn is gone. H four pawn. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how White <laughs> lost the H four pawn. He offered it. Uh, the pawn was offered. I'm guessing White's going to take on B five now. Right. Queen we takes. keep seeing this a lot. Giving up H pawn for more of a centralized pawn. Yeah. We see this every round. <laughs> exactly. And I was always told keep the centralized pawn. Rook takes C six. That looks like it's uh, heading towards uh, uh, and. Uh, the Hikara versus Prague game did, in fact, end in a repetition mural. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know if we need this position. It's right. like kind of the final position of the game, so mm -hmm. some moves were played, but we've seen it already. Exactly. <laughs> Which means, well, yeah, the threefold repetition was taken, and I just hope that we will hear from Hikaru and his version of... Uh, it's not been right. uh, a very uh, successful beginning, I would mm -hmm. say, for Hikaru. Minus one after four rounds. He'll go into the fr uh, rest day a little bit. Did he have two whites and two blacks, or? Yeah, he started mm -hmm. having black, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, let's turn to the ladies and see what's on tap for our uh, leader, if we will. We're going to go to the game bet uh, between Katya and Tan. Uh, well, this is a... Can we have Pon on C2? <laughs> this is very... You know, it's funny. Ever since... Uh, there was a uh, candidates match. Boris Spassky had lost mm -hmm. against Bobby Fischer. And Boris Spassky was climbing his way back into the candidates. And uh, he ran into a very, very young Anatoly Karpov. And Anatoly Karpov had a position like this where Anatoly Karpov started maneuvering his knight. Uh, uh, Evgeny, it was something like... 92 C3, and he won against Boris Baski, an absolutely model, model game. Mm -hmm. Karpov went on to challenge Bobby Fischer. Bobby Fischer forfeited the title, and a young Anatoly Karpov was born. Ever since that game, it's like everybody's been trying to play a maneuvering <laughs> <laughs> type of game with white in an open Sicilian instead of just going uh, and sacking the king as they do in uh, the dragon they play it positionally and we have this following the position d5, d5. Move. what do you think of them apples Nancy? I you really like it? how black is improving the position and okay. getting the pieces out and the, and the, the c very, file the major pieces on the c file just but fantastic. also Mm -hmm. The very quiet move, uh, knight to f6 in this position, not of rushing to of, winning the pawn back. Right. He, uh, she is planning to push e4. I think that's her plan. No question and about it. And maybe take that's the a, d5 pawn first. That's a nice tempo there. Queen f1. Well, that's being a little compliant, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, did, did she have a better option? I don't know. Bishop e2. Mm -hmm. But for the standings, this is a huge game, by the way, as Tan leads two and a half. And uh, Katya is sitting there saying, hey, listen, <laughs> a win today and I could bring you back to Earth. <laughs> yes, if she pulls off this win, she would catch the leader. But looking at the position doesn't seem very likely at the moment. Okay, well, let's, well, let's uh, break this down for a moment. The move knight f6, and you just told me what... I mean, you just flashed E5, mm -hmm. E4 is your huge move. So let's say I sidestep that and I threaten your rook. Uh, Bishop I guess e. I would have to take on C2 now. Would you take on C2 now? Okay. So, and let's say I go rook C3. Too many pieces on the C file. <laughs> <laughs> Something got captured, right? Let's mm -hmm. say C1. Here you could think about sacrificing your queen, but at the end of the line, I'm going to play queen takes a6. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that's what you, you, you want to do. Maybe you want to play b5, which okay. is a kind of an on, ornery thing. In the game, I'm not sure I like this move. I find this move a little, uh, well, I find it very passive. Uh, queen f1. Uh, okay, uh, take it away. How, how would you... E4? E4. Definitely. Keep punching, huh? Bishop D1 uh, looks so uh, ugly. <laughs> it does. Uh, I, I can't bring myself mm -hmm. to play Bishop D1. Now you have to take on... Oh. Yes, take on C2. Do you uh, have an in-between move? Well, oh, again. Uh, okay, Rook takes C2. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was... It's my go-to move, <laughs> if you will. Rook to C3. I'm, it's a very annoying move for black. Right? If I, mm -hmm. if I can force... Lots of take, trades. Take queen d7. Yeah, right. At the end of the day, I am snipping an a pawn. Oops, sorry. With a I tempo. Meant, yes. And although I, I won't say, you know, this is winning or anything like that, there's still a lot of chess in it. Uh, if white manages to quickly create a passer on the queen side, then right? they have very good chances. But exactly. The question is do they have time? Miro, jump in on this one for us, as, I mean, it's so crucial game for our standings. Was the move Queen F1 engine approved, by the way? Uh, well, not really. Oh, well, it's a second best. Second best. Second best, for whatever reason, Rook E1 was Rook just a e tiny bit, but, but, you know, we are talking, fractions. like, still, like, fractions around zero, zero, zero marks. So, gotcha. computer considers this one to be even. Okay. Uh, well, your... 
attempt to play bishop e2, it turns out the best move for black. It actually was quite a reasonable move. Black's move would have been rook to d4. That's what black has to play. And then, yeah, black wins in any line except for rook c3. So both sides kind of have to be very inventive. And forcing moves. Yeah, so it takes here, takes here, then you have to recapture because c8 hands with a, with a check. White captures on d5, uh, on d3, and black captures on d5. Ah. This is, well, according to machine, it's equal, and probably it is, yeah, if you think of, yeah, like, the only thing I can think of is, like, c3, but no, uh, to I keep, you know, to keep the majority, but then, and it, this is important, I think, because otherwise, still two Maybe, bishops yeah. and the queen said, but black has the resource of bishop g5, ah. trading the bishops and simplifying even further. Nice. Yeah, not That's much a you nice can do. Move. That's not a much nice you move. can do. Okay, jump back to queen f1. To right. Continuation in move. the game. E4. That's what Nazi was doing, right? Yes. Correct. <laughs> Bishop e2. Rook to c2. Okay. Rook to c3. I think we figured yeah, this that, one out. That, that was our interference. Uh, rook move. takes. Rook takes. Now I dared to try to sacrifice the queen against the machine. It didn't work. It's interesting though because. You like, if you're works, imprecise right? with white, if you say you take the pawn on a6, then black all of a sudden is not pessimistic at all. No. Because he's getting the pawn, he will be able to block the d-pawn, right. right? There is a potential target on f2. Mm -hmm. And white's light square bishop, if you think of it, it's, it's a bit useless, right? Mm -hmm. doesn't have that many targets. However, immediately after black sacrifices, if black sacrifices the queen, queen d1 is very strong. Threatening d6, d6, and then you are in no time to capture b4. Ah. You, well, computer does, but then, yeah, the d-pawn advances in white's, white's much better. If you block, then, then you take a6. So nice. White is better. Black cannot sacrifice the queen. But it turns out he doesn't need to. So after rook takes c3, uh, queen d7 or queen d8, which leads, I believe, to the same, same thing. thing. Right, one of the lines would be to trade, trade, and this setup with the pawn on e4, and you know potential weakness on f2 apparently compensates for White's pair of bishop. Hmm. Like bishop a6, you would think, I think wins. It's mostly because Can I take the pawn, please? Black's yes. Queen activity, right? Queen c2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, if any side has to be careful, it's probably White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A4 is hanging. Yeah, for instance, yeah, white is asking for queen's exchange and black doesn't even accept it. <laughs> he takes a4. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like black's activity, black's, yeah, like nice pieces, they fully compensate for a pair of bishops. Okay. Okay, and we are still waiting. Ah, no, 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 wait a second. Queen d7 was queen played d7. instead of e4, and this changes things whoa, whoa, quite whoa. a bit. Because now there's. A tempo against the rook on c8. Bishop e2. Ah, she still wants queen a4. Bishop e2, rook c2, bishop a6. She still has... Uh, it, 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 this is a funny variation where I was thinking, oh, isn't this great? Uh, white gets a tempo. Katya gets a tempo against the rook on c8. There is an answer. Queen takes a4. And I've got it, suddenly it's... All the rooks are hanging. Yeah, it's like, what? Uh, that's a complete mess. So, queen d7. Interesting. Is there something... Well, here... Which um, pawn should white defend? <laughs> exactly. Uh, for me, I would like to shut down the rooks. In other words, I would like to play the move c3. Mm -hmm. I suppose she's thinking, can we, can we have a look? c3, okay. just... Just take a uh, take, take a gander. queen a4. Queen takes a4. And again, I didn't like queen f1, so now I'm looking at moves like mm -hmm. uh, queen d1 and bishop e2. Here I've got the two bishops. Do I have some tactics here? Uh-oh. No, Do unfortunately. You? I was looking at bishop before, but you don't have to take with the pawn. <laughs> you can take with the rook. <laughs> no. Oh, that's, yeah. that's nasty if I take with the pawn then my rook on C, um, b3 is going to be hanging, I guess, in this line. Yeah. Okay, and that's a little bit... But as you said, as you properly pointed out, rook takes b4 is a good answer. But here I'm thinking that 
Do I have something with white or not? So if I try e4 now, I guess you have bishop e2, and then my rook doesn't have a good square. I have to go back, and that's unpleasant. Uh, yeah, then mm -hmm. I start to get optimistic because mm -hmm. I am playing rook a1, and I am capturing on a6 with a tempo against the rook. Queen d7, it's not getting uh, maybe engine approved, but it's not human approved. No, it's not engine approved, the answer. <laughs> okay. Yes, your c3 is good, bishop e3 is good, white is slightly better in all, the, all of those lines. Okay, just yes. slightly better. Right. Other games, uh, what... Uh, well, if uh, I may, oh, please. Uh, let me press this thing, and I want to return to the open tournament. Please. Nijat Abbasov against Alireza Firuja, and this is the... Position okay. you guys had on your board when you said, yes, very likely exchange on c6, and everyone would say you think so, but not Firuja. Oh. You know, the guy's very talented in <laughs> tactics. So rook a2. Give me the pawn. Well, you target f2, right? And, right. But white has knight e7, intermediate. Check. King to g7 takes the bishop, and then the queen Defense. guards g2, and you would think still draw. it's a draw. And indeed, Black has a draw by going queen h4 and back, or he can try to play for win with rook a4, threatening, you know, checkmate in one. That's so white's only move is rook to d4. Question, Mira, what about e4? Pawn e4 instead of rook d4? Instead of rook d4. e4 you can, but then again, uh. rook a7. That, that's not I'm that <laughs> clever, that's the computer, of course. Yeah, like to see all this geometry. Queen from f2 protects the rook. And therefore, and after queen b4? Yeah, after queen b4, rook a2. <laughs> Beautiful. That's incredible. That's how you do it. <laughs> so you get rid of the queen, the... right? And then you return back and you target g2, and the only kind of way to defend <laughs> g2 yourself. would run into queen h4. Right. Okay. I bet so, Ferruja saw all this. We're, yeah, Ferruja, of course, <laughs> right? So back to d4 we go. Uh, takes, takes, and there is like an option for black to collect all those pawns with the check. And the resulting position is probably equal, but yeah, if anyone, I would, I would think black. it's black, right? Right. I've so black three always, pawns. Has, always has a perpetual, right. plus three pawns against the knight on e7, which is somewhat mm -hmm. stuck there. Like right. I imagine knight on f3, we would say white has no problem. Right. So computer has it as, as equal, but well, Firuja has absolutely no reason not to try to go for this line. Well, this is, was, was a marvelous uh, piece sacrifice. Uh, rook takes e2. Okay, G3 that. was played instead, but that means take c6, take c6, and I uh, agree well, it's an, yeah. it's an extra pawn. Yeah, it's an extra pawn. It's it's on one th uh, side. Yeah, the pawns are doubled, so it's very likely White holds a draw. But nonetheless, so Firuja wins the pawn. Yeah. If anybody has a tickle, it's definitely black. So uh, nice, nice. And I have. Let's jump back to Fabi's game. Some, sure. A lot of trades have happened, as we were expecting on the queen side. Uh, when we left it, we just saw the moves uh, bishop f4, c5, mm -hmm. and then b5 takes a4. Knight c6. Did he play mm -hmm. knight c6? Yes. Hey, uh, at first I thought that was just our analysis. And queen d7. Seven, rook, rook, take, rook takes. No, this knight all... a7. And c takes b4 was played. Ah, so this all did happen. c5 mm -hmm. takes b4. Okay, I I recapture. Yeah. And yes, we're waiting for Gukesh to make a move here. He can take on a7 or he can do an in-between move queen d4. And attack all three <laughs> pieces on a1, f4 and a7. Uh, in other words, a triple hit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Queen d4 hits everything. Um, oh, which he just played. Which he just played. So I assume I have to play something like you hit everything, I defend everything? Could we take queen a4 or? Fabi did play queen c1. Yeah, I was just, I was afraid that if I took on a4, I would lo I'm a little bit worried the knight is um so you'd rather give up the knight than the bishop well i'm thinking the knight's way out of uh you know mm -hmm. <laughs> some no man's land you know uh dystopic dystopic uh 
end of civilization. What are you doing yeah, on Yeah, White King looks abandoned. A little so. bit. Uh, it was funny here when when um, it took on B on B four for just a second because mm -hmm. I, I I had to pause to understand why Bishop E three was not a good move and why queen takes a4 was not a good move. So mm -hmm. if I had gone queen takes a4? That's really interesting. You, I assume, would want to take? Take the knight. Take the knight. And now bishop take. e3, I think you're sacrificing the exchange. Do you need bishop e3? What I if you just take the pawn on b4? I'm afraid that you will play knight to mm. d4, d knight it's to d5 equal. take, and it would be too, uh, I don't know. Uh, so th there, there were some temptations in this game, uh, Miro. Uh, help us navigate them. Uh, well, I hate to, you know, to <laughs> disappoint you, but you are wrong, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, happens. computer is right, and, well, players are right. Right. So after... C takes B4, yeah. indeed C B4 is what you have to do. And I was the one to try to also, take on A4 as well against right. the computer. And Queen A7, you are right. You have Bishop B3, you can also take on B4. White is better. There is rook A1, uh, rook E1 check. Oh dear. So you can't take because you lose the queen. Yes. King goes here, then black I'm trades on A1. To recapture. Yeah. Takes on a7, we and recapture back F2 the before pawn, and now he can take on f2. Yeah, and, uh, well, white's not worse, but still, no but neither anymore. is he better. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a bishop h6 here, or...? Uh, at the still... very end. Yeah. Uh, well, there might be, but compu account. computer's not impressed. Yeah. Queen to b6, for instance, and then going to take on b4, king h7. Yeah, like, goes king h7, that takes on f5. So after CB4, Queen D4 is a very clever move. Once again, intermediate, yeah, played by Gukash. Queen to C1, takes on A7, Rook, A4. Just a marginal advantage for Fabi. So just the, so the idea is Queen D4, it's a fine judgment, right? Uh, basically what Gukesh is saying is, I consider the queen better placed on C2 mm -hmm. than C1. I'll play queen to D4 before recapturing the knight because I want your queen on C1. So that you can't take queen A4. Four. But that, that's Very the smart. only reason, right? Yeah. So he could have captured immediately. Mm -hmm. And let's, let's confirm on this. Yes, queen take queen c2 takes a4, white is, well, better. Right. Yeah, after queen d4, that's pretty much the only move you have. Right, defense. Queen to everything. c1, takes, yes, and that makes queen takes a4 illegal. Right. <laughs> right, and after rook a4, let me see, it's not even the only move. Well, the strongest is queen to b7, but also black has rook, rook e4, e4, so on and so on. It's very likely that I was right about this scenario, that these two guys are going to come off the board, so a6 and b4 pawn will be exchanged. Right. And then it's Four very hard to imagine three. white winning, to be honest. Yeah, Like any uh, end game would be, like, uh, what kind of material you would want as white. Maybe rook and bishop against rook and knight, and then you could try to push your four against three, right? <laughs> or rook and knight. Yeah, rook like bishop, knight and yeah. queen would be a draw yeah. against uh, bishop and queen. So, very good drawing chances. I wanted to turn our attention to uh, the game of... Uh, and as, as we did the head-to-head -head with the other <laughs> matchups... Very surprising. They've only played three classical games and it's all equal. One win for Fabi, one for Gukesh and one draw. Yeah, and I remember uh, the big matchup India-USA in Chennai, the Olympiad. Uh, what a clash that was. Wanted to see uh, the game of our two-time Candidates champion. Uh, and because current leader, co leader. And current co leader, Jan, and what has happened in that game. When we left it, it wasn't also about the position, which we felt was advantageous for Jan, but it was also about the clock. Mm -hmm. uh, big, big advantage in terms of time for Jan. He That's still didn't the case. Go for, uh, I think it was the computer's decision just to play the move rook f3 chill and say, okay, go ahead, try to do something uh, with black. Uh, Jan went for a more direct approach, a concrete approach, if you will. He trades, and in his mind's eye, 
he's the one with the dangerous mm -hmm. passer. He pushes and tickles How the knight. How does Black stop that pawn? I don't think he does. I think he, he kind of sacrifice. he sacrifices it and you know uh, mm -hmm. gives up a minor piece, whether it be the bishop on e8 or the knight on d7. So let's say I move, right? Okay. So the question is, can Black take all white's queenside pawns meantime, or enough pawns to draw? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Now here the pro I. I would much desire, I would love to give up my light square bishop. The problem is bishop d7 is walking into knight f6, and mm -hmm. I'm in deep trouble. Do you have knight d5 on the board instead of knight c6? Okay, I'm not sure if it makes a real difference. Maybe it or... makes a difference because ah, you don't have knight f6. Yes, mm -hmm. it does, because in this case, I do, I do have the ability to give up the bishop. Okay. I don't worry about Can knight I f6. Can I play rook d1 in between move? Uh, at which moment? After bishop d7, right bishop now. Bishop d7, rook d1, looks good, looks good. Let's pause a second. Because on c6, I think I have knight f6, if you play pawn c6. Right. Okay, can I defend my knight? <laughs> uh, well, here, if you go knight f6, I'll just trade. Yes, here I... I'm just and somehow... And rook d5's not working out. I'm just hanging in there. And if I play king d4... <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, at a certain moment, I'm just going to have to acquiesce and say, "Okay, you, 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 you're forcing me to give up the, the 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 different." Oh, but by the way, I have bishop g4. Also, oh. I I'm feeling I'm getting as long as I'm getting your queenside pawns. I don't think mm -hmm. I'm taking a great risk with the black pieces. Here, but once again, what are the clock times? It's hard for me to see. So Nepal has uh, 51 minutes okay. and Vidit has six and a half. Six and a half, for how However, many moves? However, uh, they just made move 34, so only six moves left. Mm -hmm. Vidit can make it. Yeah, that's not, a, and I really like that Miro, I really like the move knight d5 from Vidit. That was a key move, I think, I think. Mm, right here on, yeah. yeah, so knight, uh, well, knight g6 would be working, but that, that's not the move you're looking at. It's no. something computerish. Right. You were absolutely right that this would lose because e7 and you don't have bishop to the d7. Desirable. Yeah. So you would have to take, but that's uh, that's not the piece you want to trade for the for the e pawn. Correct. So coming back to the game after yeah. knight d5, computer itself is not sure. If, if it's the case. Oh. All right, so we go e7. Right. I'm absolutely sure we have to do this. Bishop d7, and then, like, computer's trying different attempts. Okay. Like, rook to e5, rook to d1. Like, for instance, we could look at rook e5. Right, king. c7, c6 in this okay. case. Knight to f4. Dang. And I guess black just plays b4. So it's very important for black to bring Force this rook, on, yeah, to, uh, to, to bring this rook into play. Nice. And the longer we go along this line, the you know the white's advantage decreases. Right. So that means that means that no. kind of I would assume that you still win the piece for the e pawn, right. and more and more of those pawns getting it's traded. Right. And I wouldn't be surprised if Vidit eventually holds. Mm -hmm. Move thirty four though, and he's on six minutes only. There's some chances that we will see rook and bishop versus rook. <laughs> uh -oh. That's the other uh -oh. one. That yeah. is, finally, we're going to have a very, very long game. Uh, we mentioned that Prague uh, is a fan favorite in Toronto as the crowds really swell around him. And our own Anastasia caught up with Prague. Let's have a look. Uh, Prague, thank you for coming here, for joining us uh, for the show. Uh, yesterday was a good day for your family. You won, Vaishali won, and um, so how did you feel? It was your first victory in the candidates. Yeah, it felt good. Um, I mean, coming, uh, coming to 50% from minus one, yeah, I, think, uh, I think it's very important to have such victories, like not stay in this minus one uh, for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, today's game was, was quite calm, there was nothing. Yeah, yesterday's game, uh, I was very happy with. Yeah, yesterday I was really like shocked because I played this f5 and then I saw this a6 first and then f5. Peter Swidler accepted it. <laughs> what did he say after the game? Yeah, he was very much okay with it. Uh, 
yeah, obviously we discussed it before playing, uh, and and generally I <laughs> he allowed me to play, so thanks to he, him. He did. A, he allowed you yes, yes to play this. Okay, so we we, are, we know now who is whom to blame, uh, in a yes. way. Yes. So actually, we know that he is your second here. How 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 does it feel to have this experience working with him? Yeah, for we've been working with him for quite some time already. Yeah. I mean, he has yeah, this experience, a, yes, to play in the candidates. Yeah, true. Um, he's a very nice person, and uh, um, yeah, we are, uh, I think, enjoying each other's company here uh, in Toronto, especially going for walks, uh, long walks. And I think it's good to have him. He's, he's been, uh, like, for the last one year, he's been helping uh, me with my prep. So. I see. Yeah, that's great. And uh, today's game, you said it was nothing special, but probably Hikaru was expecting you to repeat the line from yesterday. What do you think? <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he knew that I won't uh, go for F5 again. Why? <laughs> it's I mean, one one time, yes? Again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's, yeah, it can't be repeated. It's, this is, But also, you have to prepare for it. If, if I repeat it, if, if it's not expecting and it's not ready for it, it would... Uh, yeah, make it could be more. also funny, yes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was probably prepared for it. And also knew that I wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. So are you happy with the situation at the moment for games before the um, have already passed before the rest day? How do you feel? It's, yeah, it's kind of a normal feeling, nothing. Um, yeah, second game was very interesting. I was uh, I showed a very interesting idea but uh, I didn't remember all the details in a line where I had to remember uh, uh, all my notes because otherwise the position is very difficult to play. And yeah, Gukesh also played really well, so... Uh, but otherwise, I think my play has been uh, quite good. Yeah, that's great. All the best of luck for you in the next rounds. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you, Anastasia. Enjoy your well-deserved rest day there, Prague. I like his attitude. F5 was a <laughs> dangerous choice. Uh, good for uh, the surprise value, most certainly. Uh, but probably not a good idea to repeat. Uh, more games in the ladies' section, because we haven't uh, seen them. I just uh, was looking um, at uh, uh, Humpy's game, because it's not something you see opening? very... Yeah, it's a... It's a uh, um, Stonewall, a Dutch Stonewall, not the traditional Dutch Stonewall. Instead of having a pawn on c6, the knight is on c6. Black never castled with her king the and just went h5, h4, <laughs> and let's go. And uh, they've got a very uh, crazy double edge position uh, currently going on in the board. Uh, queen g6, knight c3, and you see, you, you know, black king on f7, white's just played the move e3, e4, but black is also uh, harassing, potentially harassing uh, the, the king. Double-edged game going on over here, Mirror. I time mean, is a huge factor, yes. Time, time. Pay attention to the time, yes. Oh, it's please. four minutes for Humpy and six or eight, eight minutes for Salimova. And look at this move. Oh, uh, well, G5 looks like an all-in move, to be honest. I can't believe that move is, is good. <laughs> wow. I mean, G5. that is a shocking move. And honestly, like seeing Humpy playing this, I would expect, you know, the colors to be reversed, if anything, yeah. Right. Humpy Canero, we always knew, like, someone very, like, solid with fundamental base, you know, to right. her game. And, yeah, she feels obliged to play aggressive. Well, right okay. now, they're just playing a blitz game because they have 20 moves to go with five minutes on, on average, five minutes on the clock. But they are, they get but they the do 30 have seconds. Uh, they're, absolutely. They're they much do get more the clever interview. than the uh, <laughs> open section. Okay. Uh, G5, just uh, tell us what's going on. Uh, well, evaluation. Com computer says why it's better either king f2 or rook f2. You have to do something about this king being under attack, but one of those is like king f2, potentially just run away, <laughs> or rook to f2, and then the king will have a square on Slide. f1. Yeah. Because let's not forget, black's king is Hello. also not very safe on f7. Right. Wow. And again, seven minutes to, versus five. Yeah, versus five minutes. How many moves did you say? 
20 more moves, 19 more moves to go. <laughs> yeah, it's move 21. That, that, that's an incredible. They very, very, very slowly. That's an incredible time. Uh, uh, to yeah. my way of thinking, king f2 is actually the most aggressive move. I mean, I might say the most egregious move as well. Because but it does have rook h1, rook h1 on right? your agenda. Yeah. And how would the line continue? What, what would be best play? according to the engines after king queen to h5 which takes away quite a bit of an excitement from this position <laughs> because black who was attacking a couple of moves ago he himself she, offers yeah, yeah. to trade the queens after You're which right. white's reasonably happy just to trade go e5 and say like your king's not under attack my king's under not under attack but i have, have a huge center. center and just positional advantage yeah okay. that would be a very pleasant scenario for white Thank you, Miro. And what about that crucial game uh, between Tan and Katja? What's going on in that one? Uh, it, it looks like it's going really well for Katarina. When we left it, we just saw the move. Actually, C3. Uh, Kate liked mm -hmm. that, and we were looking at Queen D1. She liked bringing the rook back. She's got ideas of rook uh, B1 to A1 and uh, scooping up the spawn. What happened next? Uh, yes, so Two. current position... Then re retreated with the rook, and now I feel like after rook a1 and just queen a6 next move, white can actually start using the two bishop advantage. Right? Ooh, 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 ooh. This looks ooh, ooh. very unpleasant for black. Well, I'm material down, and unless I've got some mm -hmm. kind of uh, e5, e4, bishop d6 business, uh, yeah, I'm we not were feeling earlier it. earlier that black's position was good because they had all the active pieces. Right. In just a couple of moves that has changed, black doesn't have active pieces anymore and I think why it's very comfortable. Exactly. So once again, we do see the position after rook d1 and uh, Miro, over to you. Uh, what's happening? Uh, draw. Not much in the game I have. <laughs> yeah. It's a draw for Goryachkina and Vaishali and well, so far Goryachkina is not that convincing with the white pieces. No. It was held for a draw quite comfortably. All right. So I could by and yeah, that, that's all I have. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and uh, the current position of uh, Katya and Tan, how did the engines uh, evaluate this one? Just want to see. Oh, well, white is much better. White is much better. Or brother uh, was by, much better. Wait a second. By, yeah, it is. It is. By, white, white is still much better. Yeah, same variation. Rook a1, Nazi was absolutely spot on. Rook a1 and take the pawn on a6. And yeah, I went queen c2. When you say white is better, what, what's an evaluation? Give me a number. Hang on a second. So we go rook to a1. I see the bar went up on queen your... Queen to c2. Yeah. Queen takes a6. Okay. Uh, that was our analysis. And the number... One one point seven, so more than a pawn. So oh, one pawn is on the board, and it's more than a pawn. Yeah, because probably right. you lose b six, and yeah. So e four, right, as an attempt, and then well, bishop g four is strong, and I think it has to do like it's a move with the tempo. If you trade, you don't win the don't win the d five pawn back. Right, this is important, right? There's always d five d six yep. as a. This is looking very, very good for white. And the other nice thing is um, sometimes you just have positions where you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like here, white just knows what she's doing, taking on b6 and playing d6 and winning the game. And if Lachno does win this game, she will join the leader. Yeah, pull uh, Tan down. And let's not forget, two. yesterday she was very close to losing against Anna Muzichuk and survived. Yeah. So it's, it's looking very good for Katarina. We're going to jump to uh, Toronto and Anastasia. Vaishali, thank you so much for coming uh, to our studio. It's um, It's been an interesting event, of course, for you so far, but yesterday was a really good day for the family. Both of you won. <laughs> yeah. Yes, how did it feel for you to start playing in these candidates? How, how do you feel after all these games? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be playing in the candidates. Uh, also, this for the first time, the both open and women are happening together, and uh, it's nice, like my brother is also here, my, our mother is here with us. and. Uh, uh, yeah, the tournament so far is fine. Uh, yesterday I really enjoyed playing the game. Uh, uh, today I drew with Goryachkina and yeah, it's good. Yeah, on. every round is, is not easy at all. Yes. And uh, let's say yesterday game you managed when to sacrifice a piece. How did it feel? I mean, can you tell a little bit about the game? 
Uh, so it was a Petrov defense and uh, I played this bishop d4 move. It's a new move. Uh, it, it has not been played yet and uh, uh, she spent a lot of time. Uh, okay, I got, uh, okay, bishop d7 was another new move for me. I'm, I did not look at it and uh, I continued with my plan going h4, knight g5, bishop d3 and uh, she played knight g4 which I did not uh, consider it very seriously but uh, once she played I understood like it was very serious. This then yeah, the, uh, then I spent a lot of time calculating knight f7 and then once I was uh, looking for other options for uh, like instead of knight f7 I was looking for other options for me but uh, I could not find any more. Basically I was forced to calculate knight f7 I mean to make it work otherwise it would be worse. Like I saw f3 but she gets g 5 gh4 and I don't have any attack so I have to do something with uh, my pieces because uh, yeah she might get this c5 things and then my pieces has to go back so then I took on f7. Uh, queen d3, she played bishop g5, which was a surprise for me. Yes, I think mm. she could play, let's say, better this position. And after yeah. this bishop g5, I think you found all the best moves, yes, to, uh, to yeah, finish the game. Yeah, I can just take on g5 and it's, it's yes. winning, but I played king b1. I was hoping, like, okay, she didn't play direct bishop f6, so I was hoping, I mean, it's not easy, like, to play bishop g5 and then to go back bishop f6. Uh, yeah. So it was sort of a gamble, <laughs> but okay. Uh, I mean, it was a nice game. Uh, Absolutely, no, we enjoyed it. It's just yeah. fancy. To, to, but today was like a normal, solid game, right? Yeah, we it can was a say very there was. Calm game. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. What about your goals in this uh, candidate tournament? Like, uh, what's your mood approach before you this, you you came here? I mean, I think anyone wants to win the tournament. Uh, like, okay, uh, okay. I'm just enjoying and taking one game at a time. But uh, of course, like I'm. I mean, I'm playing candidates for the first time, but of course, it would be nice if I win the tournament. So. Do, you, do you feel this kind of extra pressure in this, yeah. in the playing hall, you know, that, uh, because everybody knows that the first place, this is what counts? Uh, no, for the first game, I felt sort of pressure, like, you know, the first game, it's uh, always difficult. You're playing, the, you're getting into the atmosphere and there are a lot of people following around, so... Uh, I think like once it started, uh, now I feel comfortable. So. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So all the best of luck for you in the mm. next rounds, and we are going back to the studio to Thank Yasser, you. Nazi, and Miro. Thank you, Anastasia. Indeed, that's what it's all about: winning the tournament. Uh, quickly, I've got Anna uh, versus Lay. Uh, time trouble. I see that ten minutes for Anna, but it's again the blacks. Uh, three minutes for three Lay. minutes. And how many moves here on this one? Uh, I think eight moves left until move 40. Okay. And how did you... Maybe not. I'm looking value. at the wrong game. I, I apologize. <laughs> no worries. Eleven moves left. Eleven moves mm -hmm. left. And I was just looking at this uh, desirable uh, rook h1. I'm assuming the, the intention is rook takes a2. Give me the pawn. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got you first. Check. You certainly cannot go back. You, mm -hmm. you that would uh, allow me a check. You go up the board. Now I was trying to make some of these trickies work with rook takes uh, and things like that, um, and I don't think they do. Queen c six check. Then queen c six. Back queen f three. Right. And the problem is when I do go queen f three, I think queen f four mm -hmm. basically shuts me down, and the attack uh, stalls. So maybe. Looks equal. Equalish, mm -hmm. Miro. What do you have for us in the open section? Uh, well, back to Jan Nepomniczny and Vidit. Vidit, yeah. Uh, we think we've. I think we've reached this position in our analysis, and now it is on the board. So Vidit played knight d5 of b7, played bishop d7, and Jan, as we remember, he had quite a lot of time. He did. So now he needs this time to try to figure out uh, the line which would put the most pressure on Vidit. Right. Because, well, I've done a little research, couldn't really find the convincing way. There is kind of quite a few outcomes where white is up material, but very likely the position is a draw. Like, enough. for instance, uh, we'll come up with rather sophisticated line. Rook d1, that's what we've done, right? Okay. Bishop to c6. Remind and some you. discovered checks, right. Right? right? King goes to g3. Knight has to go to b6. Otherwise, yeah, now white the is threatening is to take the knight. Knight right. to b6. Knight to g7. Rook b2. And no. any moment you agree to promote and win a piece, black is super happy. Right. 
So White's objective is to try to disturb this bishop and promote the pawn to get a new queen. Knight e6. So he goes knight e6 and threatening knight d8 check. Right. right. And not so many squares for this bishop, but king has to go to a7, and in this position it is already strictly only move. Wow. Believe it or not. Right, then White goes bishop e3. Right. And starts some, once again, some study-like business, you know, right. like pinning, half pinning the pawn, the knight. Right. Attacking the king on a7. And then, once again, the only way to keep the balance for black would be to go rook to e2, after king f4, believe it or not, to take the bishop, something that you would not expect. Wow. And to go knight to c8. What? Knight to c8 wins the e7 pawn, and if you wouldn't have taken the bishop, then white would have bishop c5 with a check. Right. Right, and you get a position like this, where I believe white still has chances, but it will be very hard to convert, if wow. possible at all. Uh, that was almost a study-like series, right. uh, and if you have no time, which is the case of Vidit at the moment, he's, he's underneath but five minutes. And rookie two is move 40. <gasps> rookie two is move 40, so to take on e3 is move 41, but in order to take on e3, you first have to play rookie two, so it might be that he doesn't fight. If this happens on the board, there is a chance he doesn't fight because he's low on time. Wow. So rook e2, king f4, rook e3 yep. is the key sequence. Yeah, otherwise it's more than two pawns up for white, so I assume white's winning. So you have, to take, <laughs> you have to take on e3 and find this knight c8 resource. Okay, now, see, be honest. Is that, did that come to your mind right away, like that was the first thing that you were thinking? You know the answer to that. No way, not <laughs> no. even close, right? Uh, yes. But, and the sequence... Uh, uh, it starts with the rook d1. Yeah, it, it starts, starts with, with the rook, rook d1, d1, and sometimes, yeah, computer wow. switches to this rook e5, but I believe rook, rook d1 offers a better chance. Wow. But, Miro, we were discussing after rook d1, Yester played king c6. King c6, yeah. And Let's try. Looking. I'm not claiming that, yeah, mm. king c6 now loses after king to e4. Which is something that, that you move. wanted mm -hmm. to play. Yes. And here you have to, to take, take this guy. Bishop yes. takes. I was playing bishop g4. Bishop g4, rook h1. And b taking pawn a pawn. Ah, taking a pawn. A pawn on b2. Yeah, I didn't know if the inclusion. Yeah, enough. then some knight f4. I presume that the king is not entirely safe, safe. because now like mm -hmm. rook h6 starts, you know, bishop right. c5, white's going to keep one of the pawns. I gotcha. So maybe bishop oh, yeah. g4 is wrong, and but that position could be winning for white. Yeah, well, it's, extra piece. I'm not 100% sure if it's winning, but yeah, but white Good certainly chances. has more chances here than in the other line. Wonderful. I'd say mm -hmm. I'd say this much, yeah. Thank you uh, for that. We've reached the time in our broadcast where we're going to take a short break and we're going to check in our friends at Q Boutique uh, to see what is on their shopping list. Here we have it, the World Chess Hall of Fame athletic jacket. I have one of these, they're really nice. It's the newest edition of World Chess Hall of Fame jacket. It is here and it is not to be missed. Jackets are 95%, polyester 5%, spandex, I don't know why that's a feature, but there it is. And they do feature a durable, outstanding durable hot press logo of the World Chess Hall of Fame on the front and they're available in men's and women's styles. All your shopping needs can be done at QBoutiqueSTL.com. Meant the chess shopping needs. Mm -hmm. As we're going to uh, take a break and we're going to see you on the other side of this break for more action from uh, this round four of the cart uh, of uh, the. Uh, but as we go to break, <laughs> uh, we, we do a have a thing from Sharon. Yes, as we go to break, uh, Sharon. Carpenter had a chance to sit down with Fabiano Caruana to find out more about his lifestyle of this chess superstar. Absolutely, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. Give me, this is a sort of getting to know Fabi, and I know we've been getting to know you more because you have your podcast with Christian and um, that's been a great platform for you to, you know, really show your views and, and more of your personality. But give me three fun facts about yourself that aren't chess related, that nobody knows, <laughs> or that most people don't know. That nobody knows. Yeah, three fun facts. 
We know you box every once in a while now. Yeah, so I guess that's obviously Music? Um, I don't think that's... that's Craziest song on your... Most surprising song on your playlist? Well, I definitely have songs that people would hate. Like, I I assume that... I won't even let people listen to it, like... um, uh, Like Rosetta Stoned. I mean, like, nobody would ever listen to this (laughs) song. It sounds terrible. I understand that. And uh, so I once watched... uh, I was once watching the show House. And in one episode... Um, it was about a musician who makes music just to irritate people. But the question was, why would anyone ever make music that that everyone hates? It's just irritating sounds. It's not even music. Yeah. And then I um, listened to the song and I sort of liked it. And then I understood that, yeah, sometimes it sounds irritating to 99% of people, but there's that 1% that for some reason likes this, this, this <laughs> song. And that, that's on one of my Spotify uh, playlists, but I would never recommend a song to anyone. I, I hope that the that the band doesn't uh, see this <laughs> and hate me for saying this. But... <laughs> they might love you for saying it because no one's ever said that they like the music before. Um, and I know you like quirky movies, don't you? Yeah, I, I do. I, I love movies in general. Yeah. Uh, we were even talking last night we were. about um, like Cronenberg movies. Mm-hmm. Again, it's it's not something that I would recommend to like. You you ha- absolutely have to watch. Uh, crash or something like you don't you don't say this to someone it's you don't recommend <laughs> movies like this but uh, so you don't recommend your favorite movies <laughs> I well I wouldn't say like favorite movies necessarily yeah. but there's some things that I wouldn't recommend to people or like like Lynch movies as well like yeah um, I, I definitely got teased a few times because of my hair because it resembles a character from a Lynch movie oh. which the movies Eraserhead oh uh, okay is that really, what inspired you uh, no, <laughs> it's just how my hair grows. <laughs> okay, it's just the natural look. Okay, okay. And uh, okay, favorite dish, favorite food? This is uh, definitely a difficult question. I don't know, like I, I, I do appreciate some like simpler things. Like um, I, I like a lot of South American cuisine. Mm. And um, so like a simple like skirt steak is... Um, That's your thing. I don't know if it's it would be my favorite. It's it's a really difficult question on the spot. Like I really like. <laughs> That's the most difficult question out of this entire interview. <laughs> all all your last questions. I mean, the favorite movie, favorite music, favorite yeah. uh, food. All of these are really tough. We'll go with the skirt steak. Yeah. And how about that? Well, congratulations on everything that you've achieved so far, and we're very excited to see what 2024 has in store for you, and we'll be watching every step of the way. That's for sure. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us. The stages are set, the players are primed, the best of the best are ready to face off in the 2024 Grand Chess Tour. The top players in the world prepare to battle across four countries for a $1.5 million prize fund. Everything starts in Warsaw with the Superbet Rapid and Blitz Poland, then off to Bucharest for the Superbet Chess Classic Romania. The players then travel to Zagreb for the Super United Rapid and Blitz Croatia. The tour concludes with back-to-back events in St. Louis, Missouri, the chess capital of America for the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz and the Sinkfield Cup. Nine players will go in, but only one can be crowned champion. Who is prepared to make history? Get ready for the return of the Grand Chess Tour. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org education. In the world of collegiate chess, there is no team rising quite like the one at the University of Missouri. The team has brought home title after title, 
including the 2024 Pan American Intercollegiate Championship, the first time ever in school history. Guided by their head coach, Christian Carrilla, there is no stopping the Tigers. Respect, responsibility, discovery, excellence. University of Missouri. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org. St. Louis, the chess capital of the United States. It also plays host to an award-winning shop dedicated to chess merchandise, all occasion gifts, and plenty more. At Q Boutique, you can shop both in-store and online. From quirky greeting cards to luxury chess sets, there is something for everyone at Q Boutique. Enjoy a shopping experience like no other. Make sure to check out QBoutiqueSTL.com for a wide variety of gifts for everyone to enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our live coverage of the Candy. Let's uh, take a look at the standings. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the Open, uh, Nancy. Let's take a look after round three. We had three co-leaders. Uh, we do have one result. Prague drew his game against Hikaru Nakamura. And right now, we have Fabiano, Yanni Pomnishi, Prague, and Gukesh with two points. Exactly. And uh, for Hikaru's fans, they're going to be disappointed with the first four rounds. Uh, minus one, Hikaru, he was really hoping for something better than that. And in the uh, lady section, uh, life standings there. We also have one result, Koryachkina drew against Vaishali. So at the moment, we have two co-leaders, Koryachkina and Tanjong Gi. And Vaishali, very solid, two points. Absolutely. And uh, everything to play for in the other games. However, we do have breaking news in Jan versus Vidit. And <laughs> Vidit tried that King C6. I tried it against Nasi. We didn't come up with a win for White, but during our break, Miro. It's winning. Yes, it is. So after rook b1, if, as you remember, yeah, bishop c6 would be the move to hold. There was bishop e8 with the idea to play bishop c6. That's the other one. King c6 doesn't look that bad. Doesn't. King e4. And it turns out it was not enough to make one mistake to kind of lose it completely because knight e7 would still hang around. Knight e7, bishop e7, you take the pawn and you try to exchange as many pawns as possible. Right. So Vidit played bishop e8 and I believe the time is the fact that he's down to two minutes only. Rook takes d5, bishop h5 and Nepo has to find only winning move which is bishop to c1. Defend a very good pawn on b2. Yeah. And by the yes, way, so you also, were right. <laughs> yeah, you were right. The rook on b3 yeah. got stuck. stuck. By the way, don't forget about the bishop on h5 hanging as well. So bishop g6, check, king e5. And by the time you play b4, and by well, the time the they play b4, you're the bad lady. You were predicting. Rook and bishop versus rook. No, no, no. None of that <laughs> happens. No? Is this diagonal long enough, ah. you would ask yourself, and the answer is no. Because no. there is, well, it's, it's a tricky line. It's almost like a study-like line. King to f6. Right. If you take, I'll take still, the no, rook on b3 rook is not very helpful. No. Uh, right after king f6, the bishop goes here, and you chase it, and you chase it, and all four squares on this diagonal are covered and why just wins, period. No, I have something in my mind. It's crazy. In this position, bishop c1, b4. Oh. Yeah, 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 you got it. b4. b4. No, 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 we can't no, play no, no, b4 no. yet. Check. Check. b4. b4. King f6. King f6. Yes, I'll take your rook. I'll take your pawn on a3. <laughs> ah, oh, lovely. Tricky, tricky. You take uh, the pawn on a3. Queen a2. e8 queen. And a2. then it's a2. <laughs> and then you have queen a4. Oh, queen a4. 
Queen A4 because as well, but check. also, can you also check I, have, I have a King F5 and then, yeah, Queen E6 Checkmate. is it's the check. Too many threads, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, too many threads. But Queen A4 That is would be a lovely yeah, setup. Yeah, 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 the pawn yeah, yeah, on yeah. A2 that cannot be stopped, but it can. And time's a factor, as you were mentioning. Two yep. minutes uh, for Vida, for how many moves? So the main question is, will Jan find Bishop C1? Because time won't matter after Bishop C1. But uh, Jan has 23 minutes. Yeah. Right. So oh, he just played the key move he otherwise. It. He just played yeah. it. He did play it. Fantastic calculation. Yeah, but what's, what's surprising now, I'm checking computer lines that say you go bishop f7, you have to move the bishop, right? Right. So white still has to go king e5 and king f6. So pretty much no. automated. Next moves king e5, king, king f6, f6, rook d8. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's I mean, special. Why is playing up a rook? Rook on b3 does not yep. exist. Fair <laughs> enough, yeah. Fair that's enough. an interesting Incredible. way of looking at it. But bishop if he, bishop f7, king e5 is played, that <laughs> is just amazing. But he did right. find bishop c1, so it's the only not, move. not a surprise. But it's deals. down to one, one and a half minutes, to, uh, two more moves for him to play, and there is no move. Well, again, bishop f7, if you don't mind. Bishop f7, king e Oh, rook here also works, but king e5 B is the strongest. Four. b4, and we go here. And again, you're just kicking me yes, off sir. the diagonal. Here. Jan just played king e5. Oh, just played my king gosh. e5. He blitzed it out, too. Oh, my gosh. Incredible. b4, so uh, they've reached move 40. And, you know, when you, when you get another... What, another half an hour and now you get increment? Mm. You understand, like, this is the position you stop and try to calculate till the end. Wow. Now it looks like every move is winning, so. Yeah, yes. now a b4 is winning, rook d8. You can start with rook d8 and then go king f6. Yeah, right. This is a winning position. Well, guys, I mean, if, I mean, <laughs> this is extraordinary. If Nepo was to win this game three times a charm, I mean, it's just, he would be, well, in clear first as, uh, as we think the other game between Fabi and Gukesh, our other two tournament leaders are in a queen ending. We Fabi actually have two queen actually... end, end games uh, right now in the open section in two different games. Uh, queen endings? Yes, Abbas of Firuja are also in the queen ending. Actually, very similar positions. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I see. And yeah. Fabi and Gukesh, seems like Gukesh is holding, uh, was holding very well today, and he has. He had slight disadvantage, he was down a pawn, but he seems to have played very precisely. Well, uh, Miro, as we were going on our break, you were telling me, uh, yes, sir, this is one of those games where they could be playing five hours. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, queen and pawn ending, uh, extra double pawn in this case. Uh, they still might play for five for hours. For a long, but... long time. but. It does feel pretty drawn here, doesn't it? Uh, oh, you're looking at an Yeah, I'm position. looking at this moment where possibly he could have, he, he Fabi, could have uh, kept something. more material on the board by going king to h2. At least that's what computer suggests. And Hiding the king makes There is no sense. immediate way, no immediate way for black to simplify. He went for something a little bit more forcing, went bishop d6, allowing, pardon me, allowing queen c6, double attack, rook a5, capture, Capture, and I don't know how bad it would be for black to move the queen, but there is also rookie one simplifying it even further. Mm. Queen takes, queen takes, and I doubt white's gonna find anything. Right. Anyway, that, that's our current how position on the board. The, the black uh, queen is Show me the heck. echo game with Nijat and Faruja for a second, uh, uh, because... Yeah, how similar those two are. Uh, right. Okay. So that's that's the one the other Firuja has an extra pawn. Difference is that yeah, Black has the extra pawn here, but other than that, <laughs> <laughs> looks pretty. You know, I would argue that Firuja may have better chances of. Well, like if we assume Fabi's is 0.1 percent, maybe right. this one is 0.2 percent, <laughs> which right. still means like it, it will be a draw. But at least here, I can imagine like Black getting a five, and mm. then it will be almost like a real extra pawn. Right. You know, well, in Fabi's case, I don't see the way to make any progress, to be honest. And those players have reached time control. They're on their second. Uh, no, actually. No. Oh. Yet, but they were this never This is move 38. Yeah. Okay. This is move 38. 
there we have a view of the players. And that means, just a second, hold on. If Jan were to win, Fabi were to draw, mm -hmm. yeah, and Hikaru's already in the, uh, uh, already having made a draw, finished, uh, Jan would be in clear first with the standings. Again, mm -hmm. we're just looking at these standings. We're imagining Jan were to win. He'd have three out of four. Fabi with two and a half. And Gukesh with two and a half. And Gukesh with two and a half. But Videt would stay at one and a half. We're Prague would be in clear fourth with two points. Exactly. We're expecting Ali Reza and Nija to make a draw. So they would go, like Hikaru, minus one for the first four rounds. Wow. Huge, huge win for Nepo. Uh, <laughs> and certainly what a boost it is because you play in these candidate tournaments, you, you, first of all, you've got to get used to the playing hall, mm -hmm. every, all of the adjustments. But then you've already done that and you're in clear first. That is And you have last two candidates in your pocket that you want, right. so you know you can no, do you, it. Yeah, you've already mm -hmm. got that confidence that uh, I've played here before. I'm very, very uh, comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he is. And he is. What else do you have for us, uh, Miro? In the ladies. Uh, yeah, how in the ladies you? section, apart from this draw that we already have, everything seems to be in the favor of White's player. So Katerina Lakno, as we agreed, like has a huge advantage. This, the position we have, it's, uh, let me check if they, yeah, that's after move 40. Okay. Salimova against Conero. Right. And yeah, well, Salimova just has to collect the rook on h3 to take it back, or possibly even take on g6 with a check. That's First. one of the lines computer has. Yeah. King g7, bishop okay. h3, king takes and go d5. There might be some, you know, technical Work. difficulties, but there's like two extra pawns nonetheless. True, true. The computer considers this one to be like easily winning. Easily. Easily winning. winning. Yeah, once again, you know, over the board, you would still think it's not perfectly comfortable. The bishops on h3 is not great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but you do win. According to the machine, you just take on d5 and, and say two extra pawns. Yeah, two extra pawns, after all, are meaningful. Uh, well, Lahno against Tanjong Gi. Yeah, this is a huge. This game. is where we are, and this clarified cl quite a lot because the material is equal. Mm -hmm. Black's the move, but uh, computer says plus five plus six plus. So well, that, that materially, means, it's even. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but everything falls apart, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rook c8 is one of the threats. I assume d6 somehow. How, and also, like, you can just collect, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. But uh, for our leaders, uh, that would really uh, shake things up. Yes, but even if uh, Ten loses this game, she will be in a tie. She will still be in a tie for the first place. With with, the, with Katrina Kachkina would also yeah would also mm -hmm. have two and a half points, and Humpy we think is lo is losing, so she will be at one and a half. And, and she's losing against Selimova, who, who will, will jump not be to two. catching the leaders, but yes, she will have two points and share third place. Um, Again, we're looking at the game of Kacha for just a moment, and we're saying um, five versus five, rook versus rook, queen versus queen. How is it the, plus six? How is it plus five, six? The last move was bishop f8, and suddenly things start to dawn on us that you know there are threats to the king. They, we've got this pass pawn, this b6 is hanging, mm -hmm. but the real problem as I see it is rook c8 and or queen e8. Uh, queen e8 comes with the Same. tempo against mm -hmm. the rook, right? So black queen is just unable to protect the king side. Exactly, exactly. And so, um, what do you think? Rook c8 or queen e8? Would, would uh, queen e8 might be more... Oh, wait, but rook d5, rook d5, rook c8, there's queen e5, check? Ch check. But yes. is it still losing? Trade on bishop b6? You might still I might be losing. in like this uh, <laughs> terrible... A black place. Uh, queen e5, mm -hmm. check, yes. Uh, terrible, terrible pin. <laughs> and then yeah. bishop b6. Now that should be winning for yeah. white. And maybe even more precise would be queen, uh, pardon me, rook c8? Could rook c8 be Can more I precise? Can I maybe do queen f6 and queen d6 with a check is my hope. Well, let's take a look-see. 
queen d6 with a check, and of course G3. I three. Maybe rook, oh, I don't have rook e7 anymore. <laughs> no, 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 I have a mm -hmm. nasty surprise. This looks terrible, 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 Miro. Yeah, uh, ni nice, nice choices for uh, Katya. Yeah, and all the moves that you were discussing do win. Rook c8 is good, bishop d4 is good. Yeah. Everything. You know, like if you're materialistic, you can take the pawn on b6 I and am. still be plus five, still have plus five evaluation. So that, that's just, just winning. It's not like, you know, sometimes you would have a position where a computer claims one side to be winning and you are to find out that it means like a long line and some very subtle move at the end. If you have three choices which lead to plus five, plus six evaluation, means that is where, yeah, you call it winning for real. Yeah, really overwhelming. And again, time trouble is not a factor in this one. No, they've right reached move 41. They have and Mir reached Miro, Miro, could you tell us what's going on in Muzichuk's game? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you're getting frustrated. Like, what's going on with our position? 41. Oh. So that means reach the time control. Connected last past move. Pawns. Yeah, like last moves were f4, check, king to h6. Again, right, a computer be, has it as winning, but must you be know, winning. four rooks still <laughs> could be. Yeah, okay, so let's go over the the main line, so to speak, the, the, the best lines. Takes only five. Really? Gives away the A3 pawn. Yeah, takes, 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 and king F4. And I'm surprised we're up only one pawn and computer says plus five. <laughs> That's... But well, yeah, but a lot. <laughs> uh, maybe it's something that you know, forcing king takes, and after king g5, there Rooks. is rook c4. So right. we don't have to give it And up yeah, usually, like when one side has the side, uh, side past pawn, you're supposed to have mm -hmm. the counterplay mm -hmm. on the other wing. Mm -hmm. Right. But here, there is no counterplay because there is no world where black will be in time to go rook g3, take the pawn, and yeah. Right. So, well, you know, the, the, the B pawn's just going to win the game for white. From the, from the starting position, what was shocking for me is I thought white was going to play G5 check. And then you would, you, you would take the pawn on G5, I would take the pawn on E5, and then I'd have these... And you'd, have an, equal, and you'd have an equal position. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have these two racers, and you would have double pawns, and I'd have an equal position. Yeah, that, that's what the bot says. Again. Wow. Again, wow. we are no good anymore. Like, yeah, so we have I mean, to take lessons from computers. I have two fast bonds. You have double bonds, and they're not going yeah, anywhere. It says rook a3, and, and literally, I'm, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's equal. equal. <laughs> it's equal all of a sudden. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, but here you take on e5, and it does lead to yep. a winning position for Anna. Okay, she had a big miss yesterday. Can she win a winning position here? So she has a second white in a row, right? Mm -hmm. She didn't win yesterday. This one again, we can keep saying it's winning, but until it is, right. you know, on the, the score board. sheets are signed. How difficult was that queen e8 check? That, that if we are talking yesterday's, yesterday's game, can, yeah. we, can we just quickly, because I, I believe we have it, it, right? Up. Yeah. I it believe was, we have it, yeah. right? So that's yesterday's game against Katerina Lachno by right. Anna Muzichuk we are talking about. Yes. And at the very, very end... It was a very nice uh, uh, sequence. Yeah, so we reached this one, the, the time control, right, at the move 40, so she's getting half an hour increment. Right. And the objective was to find queen e8. Right. Queen e8, and then computer gives two lines. I mean, one, I, I was checking this game after I brought this. One, I said it, this is easy, yeah. but it turns out that still you have to see, let's say, this move. So you're attacking a queen e8, queen h5, queen d1. <laughs> you don't have queen d1, you maybe not win at all. That's a nice so it's a little bit, little bit tricky, right? Right. A billiard shot, queen e8 to d1. <laughs> yeah. And after that, King the G. only move which wins is queen, queen f7. seven. So some, you know, like... This will require some very fine subtlety. And we were looking at rook check and queen e5 check, and then followed by f5, but yep. rook to g8 was so killed. That, that, that's, what she, that's what she did. She, she played rook, rook to g8, g8, and then... I don't which know if she overlooked... Winning overlooked or something, and yeah, mm -hmm. after f5, there is not much, because now the queen from e5 not only guards 
G7, G7, which he does in many lines, but also stops Queen E8 check. Yeah. Right, so the black was safe. Wow, what a sequence. Uh, yeah, that it was a big been. miss. Yeah, and again, I'm going to go back to the open section because somebody was saying we're racing to a draw in Fabi's game. Why Let's are we see. Racing, um, racing to a draw. I'll be racing. I've been following <laughs> Nepo's game, and I saw that we have that oh, line Nepo's. on the board with Rook on D8. Okay, um, let's go to the game between uh, Nepo and Vidit. When we left it, I, I love this move. This move mm -hmm. is a real visual move. Uh, king and king F6. of six. King of five and king of six. Right? I mean, go ahead. Please take my rook. If you take the rook, I'll take the bishop, and nobody's stepping, stopping the coronation mm -hmm. of E8. So Vidit drop so back. A couple more moves, and okay. he just took on A3. Now this is the A2 sequence. <laughs> so if I take on E8 now and you go A2, yes. it's just simply winning because I can move the rook and I right. assume, right? It has well, to be checkmate uh, somewhere. Probably, <laughs> probably. And even if it isn't, we have an extra piece. Well, yeah, and the king, unfortunately, is not going to go to the D file. That, that's mm -hmm. immediately trapped. And if we go, no, I don't think there's anything it to look to at, be. right? Check. And check on Too A6. many options. Queen, Too many options, yeah. There's queen b8 check, king yeah. c6, rook a6. And then we kind of do a little run king around. King e7. The, there's right. queen takes b3. Oh. Oh, that is cruel. Uh, you were playing with me there, Nasi. Oh, that is very, very cruel. And so this is the current position with takes on a3. And but all you needs... also take on a3 right now. It's also winning. No, I want to take the bishop <laughs> and uh, <laughs> move my rook and uh, make a queen. Especially in the resulting position where your queen is down here mm -hmm. on a1. And it's kind of trapped. You know, it takes it several moves to be able to make a threat. So after we take a, a2, even if we don't have an absolutely immediate uh, winning checkmating line if I have to, for, for argument's sake, make a quiet move. I, I have that extra time to do that because it takes you a long time to break out of jail. Uh, Miro. Yeah, well, we do have, it, it's, uh, well, it's unnecessary, to be but honest, I, because too many ways to win. Right. But we do have the winning line, which once again, it's not easy to pick up, but you actually have to go any of that squares, not to be with queen in front of the rooks, rook on the eighth rank, but you picked up the pattern right, Yasser, because we will play a quiet move. So check, king b6, and a quiet move could be, will be queen a8, and then rook joins to b8. Oh, nice. So we are not taking the eighth square with the rook, but with the queen, and it guards c6, and gotcha. yeah, so yeah. this is just, just checkmate, <laughs> checkmate in a couple of moves. Wow. Right, but kudos to Nepo. Uh, I mean, this is unnecessary, but like finding all those king e4 and bishop to c1 and the whole concept of going after this bishop with king f6 and rook d8, that's a game well played. Definitely. No, when Nepo is hot, uh, he can do this. He can go on these streaks. And uh, when he's playing really, really well, which he appears to be, uh, three out of four, he's going to go mm -hmm. into the first rest day feeling very, very confident Unlike about his chances. Vidit, who started with a win against Hikaru with the black pieces in Which round Which was two. huge. Huge, yep. and now two losses in a row right. going into the rest day. Very, very tough spot to be in. Definitely, and then the candidates mm -hmm. losing back-to-back -back games, especially suddenly, you know, everybody's looking for a target. There's no easy games. And you lose two in a row... People start to start start to say you're my <laughs> you're 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 my point. Uh, you made a very interesting face there, uh, Miro. That move was very unexpected by uh, you. Mm. H takes G four. Well, honestly, I'm not playing this tournament, so I'm not the one to criticize. But right. I don't really think that this quote unquote simplification H six H five was called for, or it was because yeah. 
yeah, why? do you really need? Yeah, like your king is safe. That right. that would be my understanding, and your queen is active, right? right. Mm -hmm. So keep keep it as is. Like keep the king safe, keep the queen and yeah. active. So pretty much hover with the queen, attack this, and make sure you have the perpetual if white uh, shifts goes. there. Yeah. So h5, queen e4, queen d2 check, king g3, queen to c1, queen mm. e2, and Black no, no, captures no, no. on g4. No, so no, now no. at least, yeah, you take and there, there, there could be some possible checks. The king might uh, run forward. Right. So I'm getting somewhat optimistic. If there is no immediate perpetual, mm -hmm. right? If there is no immediate perpetual, I would probably be happy to take with the other pawn, but Problem computer is. doesn't approve. Problem mm -hmm. is queen c3 and take Yeah, like queen, ah, queen c3 and mm -hmm. this is gone, right? I go here goes here, can I take the pawn? Yes, be I careful. can. Be careful, be check. careful, be careful. Almost, yes, almost. Uh, alert, alert. Queen e3. Uh, I've seen some of these puzzle <laughs> rush. And I have to go back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, to yeah, go yeah. Back. I'm lucky not to get checkmated. That's what I mean. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. I'm lucky yeah. not to get checkmated, but yeah, right. it's a perpetual. King goes back and then check and, and back. We repeat. And, uh, yeah. All right, but I still think that there might be might be a chance for Fabi. Can I? Uh, it, maybe it's a little risk. Can perpetual? I play a five? But don't I have perpetual? Oh, sorry. Queen g one. Please, you if don't it's have queen g two because of queen e one, and I'm taking b four. So I go here. Queen d four. I go, I go to here. Queen d two. Queen d2, back not to g3, perpetual. and at least it's not the perpetual because the very next check I don't see, to be honest. I mean, queen d6, oh, but that's, see, that's okay. you lose the, the whole thing. No, I mean, what you can do is you can play a5, say, from here, the starting position. or from the, from the start. From ag, hg, HG. and then just play a5, right. yeah? Because I have a check on c7. So captures, check on c7. And then three versus two uh. draw. Probably, yeah. yeah. Probably not no, much certainly, too. certainly draw three versus two. Now, I mean, it, I, I know it's a draw, it's theor kind of theoretical draw, but some of those positions are not easy to hold. Right? Mm -hmm. This probably not so much. Yeah. I had a painful experience. I played like a 220 move game against um, in the Olympiad. Like five of Germans. <laughs> <laughs> Were you defending or trying to win? I, I, I had queen and five versus queen and four. Okay. Then it was queen and three versus queen and two. Queen and two versus queen and one. And it was called the game that couldn't devour China. <laughs> it went on for ages. And in the middle of the game, my, my team captain eloped with the first board for the Soviet Union women's wow. team. Elena Ashmanskaya <laughs> ran away with John. <laughs> wow. I know. It was like, what? It's crazy. Miro, uh, we're expecting a draw in this game, but uh, more moves have been played. Mm, yeah, so exchange king, uh, queen g1, king f4. And the... I thought, yes, at the end of your story would that be that great. you would love to have queen's endgame of 120 moves as the commentator. Which, <laughs> right. And we are heading towards this. <laughs> no, no Cash fun. Cash gave queen c1 check. Maybe there's By the way. Here? If I may interrupt ourselves for a second, I'm looking at your board, Miro. Right. And I'm seeing 99. Couple of numbers. And 90, 99 and 90.1. Yeah. And I'm going, that's unbelievable. I mean, they've played how many moves? 40 odd moves? 43, 43 moves. Something. And almost always they're playing the first choice of the These numbers are uh, yeah. staggering. That's, that's just <laughs> unimaginable, to be honest. That's wow! To have, especially like to have two of those num of those numbers simultaneously, because you can play a very accurate game if Yourself. it was an easy game for you. Right. If your opponent did done something stupid early, you have always been winning through the game. Then, well, it still requires some skill, but I can imagine like playing very high quality game. Right. But for both players to keep you know to keep that that level of accuracy, it's unheard of. Absolutely. By the way, I did that uh, for myself, just as a, an experiment. Uh, I'm a big fan of Paul Carez, and I, pa I, I uh, called up some of uh, the games of Paul Carez, and I saw that he played some games perfectly from move one, uh, start to finish. By the way, a little surprise in Nepo's game. I mean, he's still, of course, winning, but he did not take bishop on e8 like he we did were not. calculating. He took the pawn on a3. Okay, so in this position, mm -hmm. again, he did not capture the bishop. He simply played. Right. He decided he didn't want, quote, 
complications and then what happened after BTK? Uh, BD is it? thinking since they've reached move 40, they both have some time, but I'm do we have many options? There's bishop h5 or rook c3, right? Uh, the problem with rook c3 is I'm just going to take the bishop and yeah, then and this is maybe even less complex. Yeah. Um, looks. And if bishop h5. Right. I'll chase you down have rook the bishop. H8. Yes, exactly. It's I'll chase pretty much the same thing. It would appear so, right? Mm -hmm. ah, also, yeah. very, yeah. very simple. Uh, what's the engine evaluation plus nine or something after B2 takes A3? Mm -hmm. Seven, but these are, these are numbers that are not important, right. right? So the difference between kind of R line and B A3 is non existent, mm -hmm. some fraction of a pawn. By the way, in this particular game, the numbers of 97% accuracy for for Jan and 90% accuracy for Vidit, that strikes me as a normal game. Like White was better. Yeah, that's why that's why Jan is winning. Right? Yes, yeah. right, and he's kind of winning it throughout. But wow! Uh, but again, uh, break those numbers down for our audience. Why? What does 97.3 mean? What is well you? Well, for certain, you would have to ask uh, the person who invented the algorithm. Yeah, right. but how I understand that, so first of all, they do not look at the moves which are found, like the beginning moves, which are right. found in so-called encyclopedia, the database of the computer. Yeah, right? they so don't turn it on during the so. book. Because okay. no one knows what's better, one E4 or one D4. Fair. Let's agree on this. Fair. Right, but since uh, the move where independent play starts, when the novelty happens, uh, player having 99.9999 accuracy would mean that his move is always like top two choices of an engine, top three choices of an engine. Okay. I think top two, in fact. Right. Like, because top three... The matching. Top three, very often, like, you would have, like, strong move, less strong move, and just terrible move on top three, four, five, yeah? And away it goes. Anyway, so that means, like, if you have, at the end of the game, you have 99% accuracy, that means you played as computer, as right. strong as computer. Right. Which is, well, fantastic. Right. Which is fantastic. And the longer the game goes, the harder it is to maintain this level. Right. Obviously, because you're getting short of time, uh, you are getting into some very complex positions that even, like, sometimes we are running machine engine and we are, uh, machine analysis, we are not sure. Machine changes its mind, right? Even, yeah. Mm, so the numbers, so, pretty much anything in the 90s is impressive. So if I could uh, jump in there and I say, okay, we get to our unique position and we're gonna play another 40 independent moves. And over 40 independent moves, a couple of times I make a second choice, another time You're I make a third choice. You're not getting 99, I'm sorry. I know, but uh, do I have to make a, a mistake to drop below 90? Do I have to make a, a, a move that the computer says, no, that, that's not even in my top three, that'll drop me well, Badly. here we are, that, that's what I said at the very beginning. Here we are get, kind of digging into details of the algorithm, algorithm. that I don't, I'm not, not aware sure. of how exactly it's constructed. Right. Uh, I would assume once again, so it's just that yeah, these numbers are just weighted compared to like first two, first three right. lines of the engine. But that has a drawback, as you said, like it might be a position where only one move is good. Mm -hmm. So technically, you follow the engine's second choice, but the second choice blunders the rook. Right. <laughs> so you can keep the accuracy, but, but you lose <laughs> the game. Rook. Put your rook down. <laughs> okay, we will struggle to understand it ourselves. All what we absolutely do understand is Jan is playing incredibly well, but especially Gukesh and mm -hmm. Fabi have been playing very, very well. Let's take a look at Firuja's endgame. He did manage to trade his double pawns, so he okay. has a clean so extra pawn. Three versus two. However, it still, of course, is a draw. But there is still some chance White could maybe make some mistakes. Um, well, I really don't even see how you're supposed to put pressure on... Uh, let me play the devil's advocate, not mm -hmm. to say... 
Uh, what I'm going to do is sort of like, I'll take uh, the suggestion of Miro. Keep my king safe and keep my queen as active as possible so that whenever your queen m runs away, mm -hmm. I'm in... I'm in the room ready to make a perpetual check. So I'm just going to hover around your king. I'll play the move queen d8. And so it's up to you. At a certain moment, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to play f4, or you're going to go e4, e3, or if you're going to toss this pawn to try to get me to play g takes h4, and away you go. And then create a pass pawn on the Yeah, trial. exactly. So at a certain moment, you know, you're just going to have to make a commitment of what you're going to do uh, with your king side. And if you play f4, for example, like I really don't see you as going anywhere here. Right. So you got to do, you got to be a lot more cagey. And start for, with e4, let's say. Okay, and then let's say I just, um, I'm going to wait uh, passively, either F4? king g. Oh, there I, <laughs> I I walked into a check. I it's apologize. Still probably okay. But right. I no, I didn't want to do it that. though. Yeah. I didn't. I wanted let's to. Say, I'm yeah, waiting. fortunately, I don't have h4 immediately. By the way, uh, you always have queen g5. Queen, Take and then queen g5. Queen d8 on the board. Sorry, what? Yes, you're... the queen on d8 is perfectly placed because I just don't have h4 ideas right. at all. Right. Uh, I, I, I took away one of those things. And you could probably, for example, you could probably get a position like this, mm -hmm. where, again, I don't know if you're threatening h4 or not because I'm going to take. So and then I don't have f4 because e4 pawn is hanging. Right. Yeah. So it's very hard for me to see how you can make something constructive. Doesn't mean he's not going to grind away. And how do these two uh, match up when they played in the past? Um, this oh, is pardon me. This is a young different uh, game. Uh, and yeah. did it. By the way, that looks even Steven. <laughs> oh, Nepo, by the way, won his game. <laughs> he so did. It's not even anymore. So it's now not. Nepo has three wins, two losses, and six draws. So big congratulations to Nepo. What a fantastic game. Wow. Well, I mean, there's going to be, a, a, I want to see a rating for Jan that doesn't have anything to do with the candidates. Then I want to see his <laughs> rating <laughs> in the when, when he's only in the candidates. This is remarkable right. stuff, Miro. That, 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 that's amazing. That's amazing. And believe right. it or not, but I just just realized that there was candidates tournament where Fabi was playing and Jan was commentating along myself. Moscow 2015. Really? <laughs> right. I mean, he did a couple of rounds or three rounds. He was a guest of the studio. And then since then, when he entered the candidates, he's winning the kind of <laughs> exactly. leading third in a row. Well, now he, he understands that as a commentator, you see everything. Mm -hmm. And now he got that feeling that we commentators have. We're overlords of the chessboard. We have engines. And there you see uh, some of our video footage of uh, the playing hall as Jan, our clear tournament leader, he's impressed us uh, mightily massive. Definitely, and today he, of course we did make some mistakes, but Jan played so precisely. Mm -hmm. And his preparation, of course, was incredible. He had H2. four times more time on the clock. Right. Th th that put psychological pressure on his opponent. And that gives him a big advantage. Our the updated standings uh, with a big congratulations to Jan uh, for his victory. Now we have a sole leader in the tournament. Even though Fabiano is still playing, we expect him that to end in a draw. And Jan Nepomniši will be in the first place with three points. Unprecedented in modern chess history since we've gone to the double round robin uh, candidates that we've had back-to-back -back winners and uh, to do it three times i mean uh, words fail uh miro you you're looking at the ladies game What's absolutely going on? and yeah i wanted to say that it might be we've written off tan Zhonggi a bit too, too soon, soon. Uh oh right all right we all were that this was a winning position and sure. computer is jumping for joy here right uh well however rook takes b6 was played it was not the jumping for joy and this is yeah as far as i understand like computer gives few options but all of them involve pinning on the eighth rank rook c8 and even yeah. like what i said a silly move bishop b6 it doesn't do it immediately but it stops rook d8 aha mm. accidentally stops rook d8 and after rook b6 rook d8 was the only move Played quickly. Played, I don't know if quickly, but was found. Right. Uh, the game, so bishop f4, and then apparently 
Queen d1 would have been, well, still not equal, but out of plus six would be only plus one left, or plus wow. two left. She Shocking. has played, Tan has played queen to a2, but queen a2 allows d6. Which is and what queen d1 was Queen f2 yeah. is nothing to worry about. So, queen takes f2, rook takes a6. Well, maybe you worry, but not much. Well, mm. computer at least still says mm. why it's winning. However, right, if we are... If we were to speak about kind of the trend in this game, mm -hmm. it was plus six and it decreases, right? So sometimes right. not the evaluation right. important, but, you know, where are we uh, shifting towards, yeah, exactly. so to speak, right? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's plus two, six, twelve. It right. all means, even yeah, for these players especially, it means winning position. But, like, if you were completely winning and then kind of the evaluation decreases and especially over the board, you calculate and you, all of a sudden you're finding lines where you're not winning. Mm -hmm. And this is so annoying normally, right? right? I yeah. mean, you were fully in control and now you start calculating, oh, okay, I'm not sure if I'm winning here. Right. And this doesn't seem to like fully control. Mm -hmm. And this is the moment you can, you can go wrong. Yeah. So this game, even though yes, white has perhaps decisive advantage, but the game is still on. Wow. Uh, just to uh, pick up the final moves of uh, the game of Jan and Vivit, uh, this was the visual move that I really liked, this move, King F6 by Jan, hitting the bishop, offering the rook. Uh, bishop went back to E8, rook went to D8, and then uh, this, this moment, I, again, wild horses wouldn't, couldn't have stopped me from taking that bishop on E8. Very patient. Uh, Nepo, he just recaptured the pawn, and after bishop d7, again, very patient Sh move. Should we say that White's king was the hero of this game? No question <laughs> about it. As, uh, led the pawn to cor coronation. Uh, the idea is that you just want to take this bishop, and after, for example, rook takes e3, rook takes d7, check, and the heroic king. <laughs> uh, marches all the way from uh, E1 to E8. From E1 to, to E8. Win the game. Very nice. And again, for Jan, uh, this going into the um, rest day, I want to say, uh, I've always thought that Jan is a very streaky player. He chess for me is a game of confidence. When you're playing really, really well, your confidence is soaring. In Jan's case, it's it's triple case of confidence results hand in glove, he is looking great at this moment. Absolutely, and I think he picked up something, because he's always been, as you said, like, streaky play in a way, like he starts well and it goes really well, yeah, good, yeah. until he, he kind of, if he loses one game, yeah, right? He hiccups. So now he, well, not the, the case in this tournament, mm -hmm. but he's also capable of kind of shaping up and continue if things go wrong. So far, nothing hints at things going wrong for him. Right. Like very comfortable draws with black and two spectacular wins with white. When we think about it, Nasi, for well, just actually, a moment, uh, in the four mm -hmm. games, has he made any mistakes? I was going to say, yesterday <laughs> he was worse against Gukesh. There was one moment where Gukesh had a chance, but he had to play very precisely and uh, but he was in time trouble. Gukesh did not have enough time to find the advantage. Remember the rook and the minor piece endgame? Not From Catalan, I believe. Okay. That transposed into Queen's Gambit accepted, kind of. Well, I think uh, Miro can pull it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give me, yes, give yes. me a, give it was me a the second. Two bishops. Yeah. It was the right. two bishops versus the bishop at knight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we didn't like a4. Yeah? This was the a, yeah, rook d1 was terrible. This is the a4 moment mm -hmm. where b takes a4 is followed by bishop c4. Very strong. And then it's just like a, a some, surprising some tricks uh, here and there. Deal with f5. Uh, yep. It's not that easy if you're black suddenly to deal with f5. Somehow you can, according. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the computer realizes that yes, this is this is a good. This a was good a good try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for white, uh, a missed opportunity uh, for. Gukesh. Right, but what we say, yes, is that Jan was in a bit of trouble in this one, mm -hmm. but that that perhaps the only one, right? Yeah, yeah. And even in this one, he defended when. Well, after Rook D1, he just defended the position as if it was the easiest position in the world to hold. It's not that easy to hold these positions. Wow.
All right, as we get ready for uh, a break, we have an interview with Maurice, uh, our friend and colleague. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. I was interrupted. I'm sorry. What am I saying? <laughs> and other two games. Um, I'm not sure what... Strategy across the board. I, I thought we were going to have an interview with Maurice. I beg your pardon. Save the date. Uh, August 17th, uh, 2024. Later this year, we have strategy across the board. Uh, which, of course, is our major fundraiser for the St. Louis Chess Club, and we're going to have uh, a number of speakers, mm -hmm. and that's... Uh, uh, this is the one that's usually in December, but now has been moved to August. Oh, yeah, I was here in December when we had this. Uh, so we've, we've moved the date. And uh, let's take a break, and we'll see you for more coverage of Around 4 after the break. Jan Nepomniši, known to the world as Nepo, will be playing in his third consecutive candidates tournament. He won the last two, the only player to achieve this in the recent history. Those candidate wins sent him to two World Championship matches. In 2021, he lost against Magnus Carlsen, and last year he faced Chinese Grandmaster Ding Li Ren, the match he also lost on the tiebreak. Nepo is a super grandmaster, two times Russian champion, and consistently one of the highest rated players in the world. Ramesh Babu Pragnandanda is a great story. At only 18 years of age, he has established himself as a remarkable Indian chess grandmaster. He was only 12 years old when he achieved the grandmaster title, becoming the second youngest grandmaster at the time. He qualified for this tournament by reaching the finals of the 2023 Chess World Cup and notably beat world champion Ding Liren at the Tata Steel event. The story gets even better when you consider that his older sister, Vaishali, is now on the same stage here in Toronto, playing in the women's candidates. Prague is definitely a player to watch. Fabiano Caruana, at 31 years old, is one of the strongest players in the world and is currently ranked number two in the world. He is a three-time U.S. champion, winning the title for the first time in 2016. Fabi played his first candidates that same year, finishing second. In 2018, he won his second candidates tournament in Berlin, which sent him to the world championship match against Magnus Carlsen. After 12 games and 12 draws, the match ended with a tie. However, Kariwana lost to Carlson in the tiebreakers. In 2023, Fabi has been on a tear, winning the 2023 Singfield Cup, the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz, as well as the 2023 Grand Chess Tour with an amazing 46 out of 52 points, setting a record for the highest point total in the tour's history. If you're cheering for an American to win, you might want to pick the fabulous Fabi. 28-year-old Nija Dabasov is a Bajani chess grandmaster. He became a grandmaster at the age of 15 and became a top 100 chess player in 2019. Nijat has played and defeated some of the best, finishing fourth in the 2023 World Cup to earn an invitation to the 2024 candidates. He will be considered a long shot for this tournament, but has surprised the competition by even qualifying to the candidates. Vidit Santosh Gushrathi, age 29, will be appearing in the candidates for the first time. Joining a rising number of Indian Super Grandmasters, Vidit has contributed to Indian success in the Olympiad as part of the national team. One path to the candidates is to do well in the FIDE Grand Suisse, a tournament that Vidit won, that has brought him to Toronto to face the best in the world. He joins his fellow Indians, Prague and Gukesh, in this edition of the candidates. Hikaru Nakamura is a five-time U.S. champion. Remarkably, at the age of 36, Hikaru will be the oldest player in the candidates field. Known as much for his social media presence as his chess prowess, Hikaru has turned his attention back 
to the upcoming World Championship. His domination in the faster time controls may serve him well if the candidates comes down to the tie breaks. He was the 2023 American Cup winner and has been rated as high as number two in the world as recently as last year. Millions of Nakamura fans will be cheering for Naka in this year's candidates. At 20 years old, the Frenchman Alireza Ferrugia has shown amazing talent, becoming a grandmaster at the age of 14. And in 2022, Ali achieved number two world's rating with a 2804. He's been to the candidates before. At the age of 18, he qualified for the 2022 candidates, the youngest participant to achieve this feat. His performance in winning the 2022 Sinkfield Cup and ultimately the Grand Chess Tour was proof of his rightful place among the very best. Another one of the Indian powerhouse chess players in this tournament, 17-year-old Domaraju Gukesh, known as Gukesh, is the youngest participant in the Toronto candidates. He started early, earning the title of Grandmaster at age 12 years, 7 months and 17 days. Gukesh proved he could play with the best, defeating Magnus Carlsen in 2022 at the prestigious WR Masters Tournament and time for first in 2023 at the same tournament. Gukesh is the youngest player to surpass a rating of 2750, dethroning his boyhood idol Viswanathan Anand as India's top-ranked player. Gukesh, part of the Indian tour de force at this year's candidates. The, the players, players are crying. crying. The best the of the best, best are the ready best to are face ready off in the 2020 Grand Chess Tour. Grand Chess Tour. The top players, the top in, the players world in the world prepared to battle across four across countries for a $1.5 million, $1. million, $1. million dollar prize fund. Everything starts in Warsaw. The Super Bet Poland. The Super Bet Poland. Then off to Bucharest for the Super Bet Romania. The Super Bet Romania Classic. The Super Bet Romania Classic. The Super Bet Romania Classic. The Super Bet Romania Get ready for the return of the Grand Chess Tour. The St. Louis Chess Club is the premier chess facility in the United States. We bring the educational benefits of chess to thousands of students across the St. Louis area. We also promote chess at the highest levels, hosting all levels of the U.S. championships, as well as high-profile tournaments that attract the world's best players. Become a member and enjoy perks such as free classes and lectures, weekly tournaments, and so much more. Visit stlouischessclub.org to claim your membership today. The St. Louis Chess Club Scholastic Program brings the educational value of chess to kids and schools across the St. Louis area. Active in over 100 schools throughout the St. Louis city and county, the St. Louis Chess Club has been able to reach over 85,000 students in both in-school and after-school programs. We view chess as a valuable educational tool. Learn more about our scholastic programming by visiting stlouischessclub.org slash education. In the world of collegiate chess, there is no team rising quite like the one at the University of Missouri. The team has brought home title after title, including the 2024 Pan American Intercollegiate Championship, the first time ever in school history. Guided by their head coach, Christian Carilla, there is no stopping the Tigers. Respect, responsibility, discovery, excellence. University of Missouri. The World Chess Hall of Fame, located in the heart of St. Louis's historic Central West End. Want to know why chess has intrigued people around the world for nearly 1,500 years? Stop by and learn about the impact of chess from our three floors showcasing the art, culture, and history of the game. The World Chess Hall of Fame has something for everyone to enjoy. For more information on current exhibits, please visit worldchesshof.org.
Welcome back, everyone. And I believe we have some standings uh, from the Open. We have two results thus far as we have living. been astounded by brilliant play of Nepo. Yes, what a game. He just won and uh, jumps into the sole lead of the tournament with three points out of four. What a result. Incredible. Fabi still at play. He's on the better side of a queen and pawn ending. It's a pawn up, but we expect a draw. And in the ladies' standings? And in the ladies, we also have, we only have one result actually, Karyachkina drew against Vaishali, and uh, still everything to play for because Ten is still playing her game. She's struggling though, uh, Katya does have an advantage, and if uh, Kate can win against Ten, then there will be a three-way uh, tie for first. As I'm just watching uh, the game of Gukesh and Fabi, this last moves indicated a, uh, a repetition? tacit uh, draw for a repetition, mm -hmm. exactly, if you will. Queen h1, queen c1, inviting a draw. Uh, uh, again, this was the this position. This was definitely the game Fabi was hoping to win, of course. This exactly. was his third white out, out of, of four, four games that he started right. with, yes. And but again, he has the mm -hmm. extra pawn, but no, I don't see anything here. Uh, Miro, uh, chess engine offers <laughs> us any hope? No, you know. Like this type of endgames, chess engine is of no use because it would always say black has enough resources, it's always a draw. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I'm not sure how you try to play. There are right. positions and, you know, the other game which is in progress, Firuja against Abbasov, there are chances. In Fabi's, in Fabi's case, uh, you somehow have to have to organize g5, right? g4, g5, and not to lose this pawn, and um, I don't see it happening. Mm -hmm. couple, of, couple of times repetition, I think, yeah. So it's not impossible that Fabio will just accept the draw right here. You mentioned the other game of Ali yep. Reza. Uh, how uh, is the other game, it's still draw according to the machine, but if you compare, like Black has Made uh, well, outside pawn, yeah. Well, the only scenario here that is different from Fabi's game, that here I can imagine white somehow blundering queen's exchange, right? right? So you put the queen on g4 guarding both pawns, you mm -hmm. start moving the king, and you know, maybe your opponent panics. Okay, not right. in the candidates tournament. <laughs> right. <laughs> but here I can imagine white losing, while in Fabi's game it's very likely a draw. In the ladies' tournament, a lot of results could have happened today. Tell us about them. Yep, let's, let's see. I just actually heard a big breaking news that Muzichuk is not winning anymore. What? It's a very complicated endgame, rook versus two pawns. Oh no, she... Which oh usually requires very precise play. Okay, so we got here and king f5, yeah. rook e5. Rook d5 We check. don't know why, but the engine says after rook d5, it's, mm -hmm. it's a draw. She had to play rook f8 or rook f... Uh, king f7 was good, or king, rook g8. King f7, rook check. I'm assuming it's king e4 now. But is it an easy draw for black? Well, I, <laughs> in, in, in a certain sense, yes, because the path is a very narrow one, right? I have to push my pawn and escort the pawn so up the board. So let's say play king e6. King e6 after, and I'll go g4. Oh, actually, okay. king e4 is... Please. I'm sorry, but I have to jump in jump here. In. Because please don't pay attention to what computer is saying. Computer is right, but uh, no, I mean, no player knows it on the board. Right. All of you said yes, it was correct, but king f4 is the one makes a draw and king e4 loses. King for example, according to machine, I mean, I, I tend to believe uh, sure. silicon overloads. <laughs> uh, yeah, so king e4 and then rook d1 and white once again is winning for whatever reason. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what I have to say that there were much easier ways for Muzichuk to convert. Like here, for instance, instead of e6, I would say, like, just go here. King f5 and king e Go here, yeah, and you can you know, return to pretty much the, the, the same normal. plan that we had. Yeah, right. then, then the B pawn's going to run. And she went with rather computerish way of converting, and it was winning, and Nazi was absolutely right that king f7, and in a way I think this maneuver is known. Mm -hmm. 
So point being, you got to tie tie black down to the f6 pawn. So like the only yeah, logical D1. follow would be g4. This this. Ah oh, no! And then I, you see, Blundered. you see, King G6. It is winning. It King, is winning. But King don't G6. Take... King G6. It's yeah. Incredible. <laughs> you you come to the other side. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And I wish I could explain this to our audience, but <laughs> as yeah. you as you see, even for us grandmasters, it's too tricky. Too tricky. Yeah. So Yas is absolutely right. This is something to remember if you can. That yeah, you go here. And then you go to h5, but that's by no means it is simple. No. By no means it is simple. What do we think are the chances now that Lei will play king f4 and not natural looking king e4? <laughs> so this, uh, this? Unless he's really calculated it, uh, king e4 is so easy to fall into. And uh, by the way, breaking news, Fabi did draw. There was, yep. uh, as you were saying, there was just simply no play. There was just no chance of getting in g4, g5, and so there's nothing to play for. Uh, so right, I, I won't bring this on no, the board, but maybe we could uh, kind of sum up first four rounds for Fabi after. Three game. whites out of the first four games. Uh, he did win against the lowest rated seeded in the tournament. I'm sure he was hoping for a second victory against uh, some of the higher rated players. Gukesh would have been an ideal win today. Gugash played a very good game. Um, he also maybe had a little bit of chance against Hikaru in the first game. Did uh, yep. Fabi? Fabi had a small advantage in the first round. Okay. Uh, but here, uh, let's just uh, break this uh, particular game of Anna down for a moment. Because, okay, rook check. And again, what we're talking about is very simple. We want to push this pawn all the way at the board, force white to give up her rook for the pawn. So we're going to escort the pawn with our king. It seems very uh, natural to play the move king e4 so that we're ready to push the pawn. And we do it with a tempo. But the problem is, is that after rook d1, g4, king takes g3. I think king that the g5. king mm -hmm. gets back in time. You know what? What? This lady Lay knows her end games. She played King of Four. She did. She did. Wow, very, very impressive because it's it's like it's so natural to play the move King E4. And the difference is what um, Mark Dovoretsky might describe as blocking. Mm -hmm. uh, King takes F6. Shouldering. Yes, yeah, shouldering. Uses the term. Uh, uh, there's no King G5. The King on F4 is not on e4, so after g4... Now it's could... an easy draw because there's just no more complications here. Exactly. If we go drop back now, now g3, we're ready to go g2, king g3, mm -hmm. king f2. And what a huge save. Oftentimes, uh, winning championships isn't so much about winning spectacular games as it is, is about saving bad positions. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a, a huge... A huge uh, save for uh, Tan. Uh, pardon me, Lee. Pardon me. For letting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Tan is going down against it Lago got, after all. She's after got all. some chances. But yeah, over here, Yas, if you would continue. Yeah, let's get to your board and just sure. continue a little bit. Don't okay, the line. Moment. So King F4 on the board. Yeah, King yeah. takes F6, G4. G4. Yes, and continue. Yes, and then just go, go what you would do. Yeah, like. Now, maybe, maybe give a check on d4, I thought. Okay, sorry. Just give a check on d4, king I f3, mean, and, king and f3. come closer. I'm hoping with white to get black, to force black to promote into knight, and maybe I'll have some chances. And also breaking news, uh, Faruja Ali Reza has drawn his game as well. How can I... No, but this one... No, 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 no. You, you just had to give like checks all the time, like king g5, okay. King g5, g3, check again. Rook g3, check. king f2. King f2, king f4, yeah, g2, check again. Oh, you're forcing me to promote a knight. Uh, you would think so, but king g1 makes a draw on the oh, spot. Nice. Yeah, that, that's why I'm, I'm mm -hmm. bringing it up. Yeah, king g1, oh. king g3, king h1, and. and but if you have plays think. king f1 and promotes to knight, is it still it a, is draw? a draw? It right. is a draw, it's it just a that draw. you have to be slightly, you know, slightly precise. And uh, let's pause our analysis as we'll jump to Toronto as Anastasia is tarred up with our 
tournament leader, Nepo. Over to you, Anastasia. So, Jan, thank you for joining us. It's been a long game and really, really long press conference afterwards. How mm -hmm. can you sum up everything what has happened today in the game? Um, hello. Uh, well, first of all, uh, yeah, it was, it was an interesting game. And uh, I don't think I, uh, you know, I dare to play Berlin game too often because it's like it's very double-edged, I guess. So if things go wrong for White, White can like, easily get worse position and like White will suffer a lot. But uh, I had like this. New idea like G4 Knight H2, like big credit to my team, of course. And uh, well, it's maybe quite quite a wide choice for Black, uh, like on the board. And if you don't know the move, then okay, it's, you won't necessarily play well. So I think what he did was one of the critical lines. But uh, later on, I think he um, maybe misjudged it like this: it's rook 5 rook 5 rook 3 maneuver. But I think like the position was like still a slow. Slightly unpleasant for uh, for Black, and uh, you know, like what I could just to keep keep the game going, yeah, like keep some tension, and yeah, it paid off. Yeah, and I mean, this night H2 <laughs> simply started to think a lot after that. Do you think this time factor also influenced the outcome of the game? Yeah, time is uh, one of the one of the factors. Yeah, but uh, I mean, it's understandable. Like night H2 is like uh, I think it's a novelty, and uh, the idea like a four or five is uh, uh, a bit too naive, but. Uh, and then you think you're playing against some computer prep. Uh, you shouldn't necessarily know that okay, what you're doing is all right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was unpleasant. And in the end, did, were you afraid of some complications? I mean, at the end when this he played before, I mean, have you calculated until the end? It's no, here, here I was already more or less uh, sure that, uh, I mean, okay, my pawn promotes and I win the rook. And then I think if my king was a bit more far, it would be more uh, challenging to win this position. But um, I think, like, as the line went in the game, of bishop e8, rook d8, you could take on c3, to take on c1 and give away rook for, for a pawn, but then, uh, okay, like, it's routinely winning, and, like, the rook is a rook, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And now you have, like, two w wins and two draws, three mm -hmm. out of four, the sole leader. How does it feel? I mean, <laughs> similar to the previous events? Um, not necessarily. I mean, every event is unique, of course, it like, feels great, but it's, like, like, four rounds out of 14, so, like, 10 games to go, and... It's not like uh, something like something is clear. It's it's uh, it's, uh, it's the like, very very beginning. Yeah. Do you, do you feel that your experience playing the previous candidates helps you in this event? Well, I mean, it's a very original question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean. <sighs> well, I, I, don't, I don't think it hurts, uh, but uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't you know draw some parallels. Uh, I mean, of course, like playing under some tension and. It's a good experience, and uh, okay, it certainly helps you. Yeah, but I mean, it all in the end of the day it depends on the result. Yes. Yeah. And my last question: Tomorrow is the free day. Are you going to check the eclipse? I have been told there is a, there is an eclipse, but uh, yeah, I'm, I know I know it's here in Toronto. Yeah, it's it's visible, but uh, that's that's a question for some you know for me to think you know later. Yeah, you are going to to check something else, probably some yeah. variations. I'll Google. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jan. All the best of luck for the next rounds. And we're going back to the studio to Yasser, Nazi, and Miro. Thank you, Anastasia. Congratulations. Uh, Nepo, as uh, round four is a, is a round that Nepo loves. He was the sole winner. Yes, uh, round four is over in the open section. And the current standings, Nepo in the clear first with three points. Closely following two players, Fabiano Caruana and Gukesh with two and a half points. And then the only man with two points is Prague in the clear fourth place. Impressive. And for the ladies, uh, we do still have two, two actually three games uh, in Prague. Three yes. games, yes. We still have three matches going on. They're all uh, close to the end. But at the moment, we have Karyachkina and Tanjangi in the lead. And we just heard that Tang might maintain her lead because she's saving her game against Lachno. Uh, incredible. Uh, just at the very end there, it looked like uh, Katya was winning, uh, but oh, she just let it slip at the very end, Miro. Oh, that would, that's very painful. Right, I'm trying to find that moment when she, well, misplayed it uh, uh, completely, because that, yeah. was, that was still winning, and yeah, all, it was good and all. And here it's still, it's plus five, six, seven, whatever, H4. 
And apparently, and this is not easy, let me tell you, bishop f2, and you give this one with a check, and this would win. Because the a, you yeah. go king h1. So queen would take, king, king would go here, then you can block with the bishop and yeah. push the pawn all the way to a7. No stop. And that's once again, it's my theory. And now I will start analyzing with computer and it will show another you know, tricky option for black and then another option for white. So it's not as easy. I and mean, this doesn't even look winning. <laughs> well, it's but according tricky. to the machine, it does. And uh, she played bishop e5, and it turns out that after queen e6, the diagonal is not long enough. Mm -hmm. If you move the bishop to, say, c3... You can't put the bishop on yeah. no, g1. It's a check, and the bishop is not getting to g1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So black just has a perpetual. So queen e4 was played, and this unpins the bishop, so black can capture on d6. And it looks like a relatively straightforward line. So that was played, queen d6, and we're king h1, queen d1. And it seems that we're gonna, we're gonna see perpetual. Wow. All right, and we'll jump back to Toronto as Anastasia, Anastasia is with Fabi. Fabiano, thank you for joining us. Um, you played today against Gukers, the game finished in a draw. Uh, did you feel that you were pressing during this game? And um, how did it go for you? Yeah, I, I really liked the position I got out of the opening. I thought it was very pleasant. Um, actually, I spent, should I go through the moves? Yeah, yeah, show I spent like a lot of time on this move, knight f5, because I thought the most natural move was queen d7. I was preparing this like very beautiful sacrifice, Oops. queen c1. Nice. And then I, I, I took a long time to calculate this because he has bishop takes f2. I think only winning move is king f1. Oh no. And, <laughs> wow. And also there's like some, I mean, I know that computer probably shows this is good, but for example, there's a line here, like knight h7, Queen H6, F6, mm -hmm. and only because of this do I win. I think only Be because, because of this. Queen is hanging, because yes, queen is right hanging, now. and then I also defend both knights. Wow. Is, so it took me a long time to calculate all these things. Um, and then he played, maybe I should have been more practical, played it faster, because it looks like he played this quite quickly, and it's maybe a good resource. Maybe I shouldn't take this pawn. I mean, I, I thought I'm much better after taking the pawn, but... Maybe it's not so much. Yeah, but it's hard to judge, yes, from far. That I mean, you can you, central pawn. Yes, you still want to yeah. take it. Yes. No, I was thinking like maybe his pawn was here, and then I saw this bishop h2, and I was kind of happy because if bishop g3, my my bishop is hanging, and he plays f6, and this is not good. If mm -hmm. I go to h2, it's safe. So I thought maybe this, is, and then I thought maybe knight d5 was his point, but then I was quite happy with bishop d2, queen h4, and knight d3. I thought everything's defended. Um, mm -hmm. And then he played the c5, it was kind of creating some chaos. Right? Exactly, yes, I was like shocked. b5, c5, yeah. normally you don't play this way. It looks this, wrong because yes. I always have nice c6 mm -hmm. ideas, but I don't know, I didn't find anything. You know, a, b5 maybe first, and then bishop f4. This is probably a better chance. But uh, here and then, yeah, I kind of underestimated this move and I, I didn't see, maybe I should take on a four with something, but it's very difficult to prove an advantage because white is also hanging. Yeah, and, um, and it's tempting to take this bishop, yes, at the end of the day, this bishop yeah. is always strong at these positions. And did you see this c takes before, this intermediate like move I mean, and queen I, d4? When I played knight c6, I didn't see queen d4. I was assessing this position, yes. which, mm -hmm. I, okay, it looked very good. And then suddenly when, when I played knight c6, suddenly I realized that he has this queen d4 in the end. Yeah. And uh, it's just getting, and the problem is like queen a4, he has this rookie one intermediate. Ah, move. this is important, yes. And then queen a7 and f2 is falling. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh. Yes. I went all the way back. Probably, no problem. Let's go back. So I was thinking also about rook takes a4. I wasn't sure, but then I was worried that he plays like knight d5. And, uh, C3 is hanging, C3. knight is, bishop is hanging, yes. Yeah, everything's hanging, yeah, nice, queen, because yeah. if I go here, then suddenly knight C3, I was like pretty <laughs> unsure about this stuff. Yeah. Um, and so then I decided to go for this position. I thought, okay, slight advantage, but I think he found a nice move here, F6, stopping any, like, play, yes. mm -hmm. I was thinking, okay, rookie four, and then um, I very often have tactics. Actually, I don't know, like, Peter starts to go crazy for what? Yes. I mean, I was thinking rook A5. If knight and takes? Knight before mm -hmm. f6. So it's like, yeah. Well, and maybe you not ruin f6, but some, the, I thought the some, something, yes. yeah. I have yeah. like some dangerous attack. So a like, prophylactical move, yes, this f6, six, yeah. yes, Very nice, was important. Now also I realize my king is kind of weak, and his knight is actually very strong. 
Like I was thinking maybe this here and then some Rook C5, but I couldn't, uh, I don't know, like uh, I thought he goes here, I think. Here, here, I, I'm not sure if this, I think it was something like this. and. I wasn't sure because also it gets double edged, right? I mean, now I'm going for the Absolutely, attack. yes, yes, yes. It's okay, I went for the boring option, bishop d6, and then we trail A lot off. of pieces yeah. were exchanged, yes, and uh, descending, yeah, I mean, you have the pawn up, but it's really hard to, uh, no, it's really hard, yes, to do something yeah. about it, yes. Um, I need to bring my king, if my king was on like a3, queen on e3, okay, then, then we're then talking. Then the, yeah. there were, there were yeah. some chances, yes, here. But, uh, uh -huh. I think like queen e6 is just barely a draw, so like it's it's yes, almost king good. Almost, yeah. For white, yeah, it's like... A5, yes, take, take. And he's on time, yes. Yeah, and king then six. the tempo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, a, a, a black is on black time, to yes. move, I guess it's winning, and uh, white to move, it's draw. It feels like a lot of things like were left behind the scene you know, in this yeah, game. Yeah. It's like it's, it's so yeah. many interesting lines, and uh, but uh, so far, are you happy with your play in the tournament? Like, how do you feel? I mean, overall, I guess I'm playing decently, but plus one is nothing spectacular. What can you say? I mean, it's, it's decent, of course. Plus one is not like a bad score, but, uh, but out of three whites, I only scored once. I could say it's, it's, I'm not like super thrilled and I'm not upset either, you know, it's still everything to play for. And that's for sure, yes. And now Jan also won this game and he's on plus two. How do you feel about it? <laughs> well, okay, it's not still thrilled, ten, yes. ten games, but yes. yeah, Jan, uh, I think, played a good game. Yeah. Putting pressure on, on Vidit from the start, new idea. I mean, he's, um, he's showing some interesting opening ideas um, and putting pressure on his opponent, so it's... He's, of course, a very dangerous player. Yeah, for sure. And tomorrow is a free day, finally, the first mm. one, and we have this eclipse. Are you going to check it? Probably not. No, probably not. <laughs> yeah. I, What's the plan? I think it was like seven years ago Then there was... Uh, Sinkful uh, Cup, they said. They, they also had it, was it in St. Louis, Singapore? yes. Yes, at least uh, this is what I heard. I the, the date, but there was like a really big eclipse. I think it was in 2017, um, and, and I went to see that one. Ah. So but, you saw uh, one, yes? Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, during the tournament, I don't know. It's uh, Usually I don't have time for anything else besides trying to totally relax or, or, or prepare. Yeah, that's for sure. Thank you so much, Fabio, for coming here. All the best of luck and have a great rest day. And we're going back to the studio. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you, Fabio. Eclipse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice time for a rest day as uh, we have a game uh, between Anna and Lee and Miro. They went right down to that... Uh, forced under promotion uh, uh, game yeah. uh, as well. So and first, the, first I wanted to we confirm finish. that this one is official. Lachno and Tanjongi, a draw. Right. Tanjongi well escapes miraculously and keeps the sole lead. Wow. And now, so what we have, we still have Salimova playing. We considered it winning. It is winning. It's going to go on. This one is a peculiar position, <laughs> right. right? So Muzichuk against uh, Lieting Ye. Yeah. So where it was, yeah, this check, uh, yeah, hang on. Yeah, after this check, King G1, this funny looking move would be faster way to make a draw. Right. Because yes, you hide in the corner and yeah. Uh, stalemate after Rook takes G2. Instead, uh, yeah. King of one, king of three, and the problem here is you cannot promote into queen because rook d1 checkmate. Right. Therefore, g1, nine, and uh, there have been quite a few games uh, which reach this position. And it's well known that this, if we move everything to one file to the right, if the knight promotes in the corner, it's, it's lost. lost. There are tricky positions where you promote on E1, interestingly. Mm -hmm. But this one, as far as I know, is one of the easiest ones Draw. to hold. Yeah. Because it's not easy for white to even, you know, like disturb black to... So black pretty much hovers with the knight to H3 and back to G1. Let's see what happens in... Yep, check. Rook F6, and you can go to H3, you can go to E1. I think you don't want to go King D1 because, <laughs> because you lose the horsey. But right. other than that, I two think other moves are fine. We'll probably see 50 moves. She did play Until Knight H3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this could be a long, a long game. Right? <laughs> a long game. Knight H3, uh, expecting a draw here. And then in the game of Humpy, let's just pick that up because we haven't yeah. seen that in a, in a while. When we left it, um, 
White had two extra mm -hmm. bonds, and she's still nursing them. And again, this is one of those where you have uh, pawns on both flanks. You actually want the bishop, and here the rook and bishop combination against the rook and knight is overwhelming. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised that she hasn't won it already. Am I seeing that right? Are they on the second time control? And now it's I only two so. minutes? Yes, because they're on move 57. So okay. they're both in time trouble, but they have 30 second increments. So time is, shouldn't be a concern. All right. So this one, well, what to say? Just plunk bishop your bishop on uh, the mm -hmm. powerful central square. I think unless white makes a huge blunder, there is no way she's not going to win this. Exactly, and just escort the pawn home. Bishop d5, g6, g7, g8 equals queen uh, is uh, the simplest way, and she started mm -hmm. on the right foot. Bishop d5, I'm bishop just d5. a little bit shocked by... Uh, the fact that the game is still on. No, not that, that Katja uh, didn't win, first of all, because she was at plus six, in three different ways. It wasn't like you, 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 you. Maybe that she was the problem. Choice. She thought everything is winning, so she relaxed a little bit and gave opponents some chances. Mm, for me, one of the things I really am confused about, uh, I, I learned this really earlier as a, as a teenager, is I got a position where literally, just a second, right here, after uh, Bishop, I got in a position where I was terribly pinned mm -hmm. on the eighth rank. Right. And I could never get out of it. In fact, if you put a black pawn on g6 and a white pawn on f6, it was like I was frozen. And I had this feeling of absolute physical helplessness. So after that uh, searing experience, I want to say, it's impossible now for me not to play the move rook c8. I never want to experience it again. And pinning my opponent has become second nature to me. I love these ideas of rook e8 and queen e8. So for me, it's a real it's a real. I think real she probably stunning. missed the idea of rook d8 that simply just holds the last rank, defends the last rank, and then you have to just win with the two extra pawns, which was still winning. But like Miro said, it was not that simple to play bishop f2 instead of bishop e5. Right. It's not intuitive. The last in winning moment, moment right, right here, where bishop f2, and then the idea is you're going to put all your eggs in one basket, this a pawn is going to go to a7, and the way you're going to do it is you're going to put your bishop back on g1. But let's say here black plays king g7, threatening bishop c5. You still have to make a couple of accurate moves. Maybe queen a7 is uh, necessary. I Actually, I want to go a6, a7, a8. So let me put my queen mm -hmm. on a c6 so that I can go, a again, my bishop on, on the first rank is going to cover a7, and I want to queen the pawn, so something like queen here. And black just needs two Yeah, you need three. to play, <laughs> you need to play bishop mm -hmm. uh, to f2. Right. Or bishop to e3, you need to block, but we can understand why the computer recommended this as a winning line. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, but again, you it's so human, you want, to, you want to keep this pawn on d6. You don't want to give it up until you reach this position when suddenly you go, uh, what do I do now? Yeah, and there goes the advantage mm -hmm. completely. Uh, a real, real shocking turnaround in this game, a shocking turnaround in the game of Anna, where uh, she was winning a very comfortable uh, rook and pawn ending, and now it's rook versus knight, um, and a draw likely here. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It is. Um, big, big uh, events going on in the ladies' section. Again, for those of you who are tuning in late, we have a clear winner in the uh, open section. Jan uh, um, was the only winner uh, and has a clear lead with three out of four. A couple mm -hmm. of players chasing him at two and a half. But here, take a look at the men's standings after four rounds. All right. Uh, right like Yasser said, Nepo is in the clear lead with three points and with two and a half, only two players following Fabiano Caruana and Gukesh. I remember these U.S. championships where sometimes I would win a game and everybody else <laughs> would draw it. I was like, yes, guys, <laughs> keep it up. Just keep, keep, keep up that routine. And in the ladies' standings, uh, we've got uh, two games remaining, of course, but we have a clear leader here as well. 
Yeah, Tang, uh, what an amazing save today, and she remains in the lead with three points. And Goryachkina following behind, just half a point behind. How do you get impacted when you let a game like this slip? How, how, how do you feel when you're in uh, Kate's shoes right now? You just feel mm -hmm. exhausted, angry. <laughs> it feels Terrible. so much worse than just losing a game. Worse than yeah. losing a game. Letting, it does. Letting when you have come. a winning game like this, where you have plus six in many different ways, and you let your opponent escape, it feels like you lost. It feels like you It does. And it's much, for me personally, much yeah. harder to recover from that. Really? Mm -hmm. Nero jump in. That, was yeah. a, that for me, yeah. that was a big, well, big I, result. I haven't played the tournament game for ages, yes, so I don't mm -hmm. remember how it feels, mm -hmm. but uh, I would uh, agree with Nazi. So, yeah. in a way, like, Losing a game if you played well and one kind of made one terrible mistake. Yes, mm -hmm. you're not happy But it's understandable, right? Mm -hmm. But if you put so much effort that you've got absolutely winning position and then Once again one mistake I would kind of not be so harsh on myself But if it kept being winning and, and you just move played and you didn't move, win. Yeah, that, that's nerve-wracking Yeah, that's nerve-wracking and terrible. you know I have uh, to compare it like with billiard sports like you know you have like a lot of easy balls to make But right. you have to take a positional shot to the next ball right and if you are not perfect uh, to the margin of error kind of combines and combines and combines and then you have to find like Bishop f2 was the only win right and then yeah It's very and, and then at some point you have to take a kind of a hard shot on the on snooker table or right. pool table right. And if you don't make it and it's one 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 off opportunity, right? out of like, uh, which was easy solvable. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, she didn't play rook c8, she didn't play this and that, and then she was the one to find, to kind of have to find bishop f2, which of course was not easy. Wow. Yeah, disappointment. Mm, very, very disappointing. Uh, bring us up to date on the Anna uh, game with Lee. Has uh, Muzichuk has a rook and her opponent has a knight. <laughs> yes. so that, that's, uh, that's breaking opinion. news in my expert opinion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, but seriously, they've been, uh, I'm almost sure, like, yeah, if somehow this knight gets on g2 and the king is on g1, mm -hmm. it's in some cases even like winning, and in some cases it's super hard for black to keep, like you have to play only moves and so on. But knight on g1, knight to h3, knight on h3, you can't really move this setup away. So we might see, I don't know how many, 50 moves of, of hovering oh, yes. around. Okay. But that will be it. And the other one, I'll just check quickly because as you said, no, okay, this must be, must be over. This must be over. As you rarely see evaluation and plus one. Yeah, the, yeah, here we go. Perfectly timed there on that one. <laughs> well yeah. done. So Salima one wins, and now... A big result. That's a it big could, result, because if you losing. look at the standings, yeah. that would mean that, you know, few, which you would consider to be Love. favorites, Hopi Canero, Yeting Gia and Muzichuk, let's assume they make a draw against each other, right. they would be tied for last. Uh, yeah, they're in the bottom half of that field. That's remarkable. Yeah, and then Tan uh, has a big lead now. Besides Garyachkin, she has a full point lead on the rest of the field. That's uh, only after four rounds. That's yeah. huge. By the way, in that interview with Vishali, I really liked her attitude. Like, so what are you coming in here uh, <laughs> with? Uh, I want to win the tournament. <laughs> that would be nice. I'm taking it one game at a time, uh, but that would be nice. I just, once again, for those of you who are joining us a little bit late, the game of Jan, very, very impressive game. He kept up the pressure, but it was really out of the opening, and he was the first to give his team credit. Uh, he came up uh, in this Berlin ending, and I've got the position teed up uh, against Vidit, and it was very strongly re reminiscent. He played the move knight h2, and that was a novel idea. Uh, it, it's very often ha happens that, as Miro was explaining, you want to play the move f4. You have to get your knight out of the way, and most players had played it previously, knight to d4, and then after moves like h5, the pawn on g4 ends up giving black a uh, sufficient counterplay. But the move knight h2, on the other hand, uh, well, reinf passive, but yeah, reinforcing mm -hmm. the protection of the g4 pawn helped him achieve the following. He got a position where his king could nicely come up the 
uh, up the board, and he's putting pressure on uh, Vidit's king side. So all in all, uh, a really great day for uh, Jan. Mm, yeah, so he, he's the only one to be happy, I think, yes. after today's round and after four rounds. And by the way, we've a just got the just last result in. of today. Yes. A draw for Muzichuk. Yes, of course, very on us, very disappointed, I can imagine, but that uh, this is it. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, I don't know if we're going to be teeing up uh, reports from Toronto or further interviews, but uh, a good moment to uh, get our thoughts together about this round four, uh, free day tomorrow. You go into the free day, uh, you assess where you are, you assess your form. What goes through your mind as you, uh, uh, as you prefer for the next part of the candidates, uh, Miro? All uh, right. So once again, never been kind of a player. <laughs> well, so, so as a it's trainer, hard, it's, it's hard, to, hard to tell, right? But yes. something that Jan said, I find it like we, as the commentators, we already feel like yeah, four rounds behind, and then here's the leader, and ten more outside. to play. Ten more, to, longer than your usual tournament, right? right? We, we are used to have a tournament of nine rounds, for example. Ten, so ten more Cup. games. Ten more. Ten games. more games. So that that's yeah. Enough yeah. said. Right. Even if you're like one point behind, one and a half points behind. Ten, ten more games. games to go. That's, that's what matters. Right. So we can judge on who has kind of what form and mm -hmm. clearly Jan is the man. Uh, mm -hmm. Fabi, once again, he said it himself, like yes, uh, nothing to complain about, but also he had three white pieces out of four and would, okay, would prefer to score half a point more, more at the very right. least. Yeah. Right. And he, he didn't that, think he had made anything spectacular. Gukesh, Gukesh does well. Right. Right. On plus one. Plus one as well. No okay. reasons to be unhappy. In the ladies section, the happiest is Tan. No question about for it. Sure. She's clear first. Saved a lost position today. Today, in the ladies section was it was all about saving the positions. Right. And both Chinese ladies managed to save completely lost games, so that they're both definitely happy going into the rest day. Exactly. As uh, well, again, uh, let's take a look uh, once more at our standings as we get ourselves prepped and ready uh, for a free day as well. After four rounds, Yanni Pomnishi in Seoul lead with three points, closely following Fabiano Caruana and Gukesh with two and a half, right. and only Prague in clear fourth place with two points. 50%. Uh, when you look at the uh, bottom half of that field, Ali Reza did it. Hikaru, especially Ali Reza and, and Hikaru, didn't expect them to be on the second half of the cross table in the ladies. Right, and in the ladies section, we have a sole leader as well, Tan Zhong Gi with three points, and Gariachki now with two and a half. However, in the third place, three ladies sharing Lachno, Vaishali, and Salimova after a big win today uh, over Koneru. Absolutely, and we see Humpy and Anna there again at the bottom half of the standings. Didn't expect that. We're going to go to Toronto for some final thoughts from Anastasia. Here in uh, Toronto, during the FIDE candidates, um, I was uh, really surprised. I mean, I mean, not really surprised, but I was really impressed by the game uh, between Jan Nepomniuszczyk and Vidit. I mean, I think he played very, very powerfully. And uh, having already three out of four, I, he took the sole lead in the tournament. And it feels like it reminds me something, guys, actually. You know, remember this um, big fight between uh, Fabiano Carvano, who was chasing Jan Nepomniuszczyk in Madrid. So I don't know if I'm, I'm watching the next next um, um, episode of this series. I'm not sure about that yet. We have only four games, but it reminds me something. And today I was talking to Fabi about it, and uh, I think he was a bit disappointed that he didn't manage to um, defeat Gukesh. He had, he thought he had really good chances. Then while we were analyzing, he understood that it was not so great, um, even though he was putting pressure on his opponent. I mean, it's, it's a big fight already. It feels like every game means a lot in this tournament, even though they keep the players keep saying that the tournament is long and uh, we're only on the day number four. But we know what happened in Madrid. Once Jan Nepomniuszczyk took the lead, felt confident, it went really his way. So I'm wondering what is going to happen in the next
next. Uh, at the same time, in the women's and we have um, also, I, I was following, of course, the games, and I can see that two players, like Anna Muzichuk or Katerina Lagno, had really good chances today to score, but it seems like they are not cannot find still the shape in, in this event. Anna Muzichuk had winning chances already for the second time and didn't score, I mean, made two draws uh, in those games, which is really disappointing for her, I'm sure about that. At the same time, Tan Zhongyi keeps the lead, um, had really lost position and uh, was really close to, to lose. Um, in any case, we have a lot of um, drama here happening uh, in every round and many, many interviews. We have lots of journalists in the press center. You can see that, I mean, um, all this, uh, what is happening normally for the big events, um, press conferences, interviews, one after the other, everybody finished basically like around the same time after two quick draws. So it's really, it was really exciting round and um, let's go back to the studio and uh, finish the day. Well, thank you indeed, Anastasia. It was a very exciting round, but it's now time for free day. Uh, the commentators have <laughs> earned it. We're looking forward to seeing you all back, not on Monday tomorrow, but on Tuesday, same time, 4 p.m. And in the meanwhile, we'll wish you uh, the best of a great weekend. Until Enjoy Tuesday. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Bye for now. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.